What's good, everybody? I bet y'all didn't think I was going to see me today, huh? Me neither. I kind of woke up early today, got a lot of errands out the way. I got me a new, brand new studio chair. And actually, I went and I got it from the Goodwill. How cool is that? $25 for this cool super chair. And one day, I'm going to have to take a picture and do a video of it. I don't want to get up out of this thing now. It's super comfortable, super comfortable. But I had to go um, do some edits to it. I had to do some fabricating. So I went down to Harbor Freight, bought me some casters, did what I had to do. Now I got my, my chair is perfect now. Now it's an actual studio chair. What up, Randy? He's the first in the building. What's good? Be smooth. What up? And I'm telling you, you know, YouTube might not like today's podcast, but we got to do it anyways. Today's podcast is about what's going to actually happen on the rideshare guy. So the rideshare guy, they've got, you know, the big podcast coming up today. A lot of us are waiting on this. This is David Richard, the CEO of Lyft. All for kicks. What's up? Greasy. Hey, I think Greasy's from where? Hey, Greasy, where are you from again? Didn't you say you were from like uh, out of the country? Whatever. Adolphus, Max. Hey, you guys, it's going to be a funny. This is going to be a funny podcast today. Because y'all know I got a, hey, I got a lot to ask about David Richard. And I already know the way that they got it set up over at the ride share, guys. Not going to really dig into the meat of the questions. But I just want to go and see how, exactly what type of questions they're going to ask this guy. I want to know. Because it'll be too much for me to go back and, and listen to it again. Because everybody be talking about it afterwards. So at 3 o'clock p.m. Arizona time, I'm going to jump over there to the ride share guy. And kind of see how they're going to ask this guy some serious questions about a lot of adults. Working hard, working adults got to put up a lot of money for the equipment that we got. And we don't got deep pockets. We don't got those deep corporate pockets. We can't go out and get corporate loans. We can't go out and get investors. We can't do all of that. So I want to know exactly what is he going to do for us? The, the shallow pocket people that actually invested to help his damn company. Because a lot of times all I hear them talk about is, is the passenger, the rider, the customer, the client. They never talk about the driver. So I want to know, what are you going to do about this part of the business? Because without drivers, it's just an app. That's all it is. People will be sitting on the telephone all day just using an app. It won't be anything. So here we are sitting here with the cars, with the wheels, with the tires, with the interior, with the fuel, with the maintenance. And we ready to go put in some work. And this dude, they, they keep finding ways to take away money from us. Keep trying to find ways to say, well, we're going to take part of the fare. And we're going to do this with the service fees. Are we going to take part of the money and we're going to increase service fees? But we're going to reduce what we're paying drivers. We're going to give them all lower tiers. I want to exactly see what these people are going to talk about. So I'm glad he's coming live, but it is going to be funny to see how this really goes. I want to see how it goes. <laughs> oh, Dolphus, what's good? My brother, my he says, I need to be the CEO. I don't know, man. If I was the CEO, we all be driving Bentleys. No, I'm just kidding. We ain't going to be like that. Because not everybody that has money knows how to handle money. We don't have financial literacy. So I think the first thing I would do is if I was a CEO or Lyft to anybody else, I would give everybody automatic financial literacy classes. I'm like, if you want to work with us as a ride share company, you have to be financially literate because that's how we're going to invest in you. Because like I said, corporate America sent me to financial literacy courses. They sent me to time management. They sent me to a lot of, you know, management, time costs, accounting, seminars. They sent me all over the place investing in me so I can be a better asset for that corporation. So I don't see why rideshare companies don't look at drivers as being part of the corporation. We're not the corporation. We're not employed by them, but we're a major part of them. Because without drivers that actually function and can live life and can produce, I mean, we're nothing. They're nothing. They can't really have a driver come online that's always scrounging and hustling and car breaking down and them trying to hustle passengers for extra money. They're not going to make it as a corporation like that. They've got to have drivers that are financially literate, well put together, ready for some professional business. What up, Wes? My man. Hey, I'm always telling everybody about that EV Golf you got, man. I love that car, dude. When you text me that picture, I love that car. It looks just like my homeboy's Golf in Vegas. And his is a, the five-speed uh, manual gas engine. Yours look just like it. I like that Golf. But without drivers being financially literate, I mean, what what point do we have in having these people come on our it's like having a whole bunch of crackheads trying to help you at the crack factory. They're going to be smoking the shit up the whole time. They ain't going to be helping you sell a crack. They're going to be smoking the shit. They're going to be getting high off your own supply. And it's just like that. When we talk about ride share. We got a lot of people who are driving cars all day who are not financially literate. They don't know how to do operations. And we and Lyft and Uber are throwing these people out to the wolves. This is a real world out there. People are going in debt, blowing engines. 
blowing tie rods, ruining suspension systems, getting in debt, more in debt than what they would be had they not done ride share. And these corporations don't look out for the drivers like that. They'd be like, oh, yeah, we're going to give you free hot dogs and free Mountain Dews and shit like that. Go pick up you some donuts and shit. Hey, you can get on Rosetta Stone. They do shit like that. But they don't ever say, why don't we teach drivers how to actually deal with money? And I mean, they got all these corporate people sitting at the corporate office with degrees in finance, degrees in everything. But they don't teach drivers how to handle their money better. Because when you got somebody who's smart, financially literate, smart, it's hard to get over on them. So the apps, they know if we make these drivers too damn smart, we can't get over on them. They're going to be idiots. We ain't going to have enough idiots out there. So they do the best to give the illusion, the illusion that they care about drivers, the illusion that drivers are important, but actions speak louder than words. I want to see actions. And the only actions I'm seeing is them jacking the fares up. I mean, jacking their percentage of the fares up to, you know, 50 percent to 70 percent of the fare they're taking. I see them pulling cars out of tears, trying to force people to get rentals. So we're always seeing them do something to the driver's side to hampen our, our growth. But they're always talking about, oh, we're going to make this a consumer friendly. We're going to do this for our riders because they think riders are the money. Riders are not the money. Drivers are the money. Because without drivers, I can pull up to any event with a lift light or an Uber light and tell somebody, hey, my ride just canceled. Anybody need a ride? Because I'm headed towards, you know, Gilbert. Oh, dude, we'll take you. Hey, man, we'll give you $50, $60. They're trying to charge me $182. See, I don't need the app. I could just talk to a motherfucker and get a ride. But the apps need drivers because people will just be standing on the curb all day running this app, running this app all day on the curb and nobody ever show up. Because without a driver, that transaction can't be completed. It's just somebody using an app. And they want to turn around and say the app is the actual service. The app is the service. Therefore, the service fee should be higher. Driving, to me, is the service. Driving is getting you from point A to point B. That's the service of ride share. They consider it using an app as the service. And that shit, to me, ain't right. It don't fly well with me. What up, Melly Mel? My man. Lift Lux was popping in San Antonio last night. There you go. Shit. Hey, get that money, man. I was going to drive last night, but I was like, I need to take me a nap. So I ended up waking up like way too late. But I did get up and I did um, I did one airport run. And I think that was it. Now, did I do that yesterday? Maybe it was the day before yesterday. I can't remember. Because I don't think I woke up today and did anything. Yeah, I didn't do nothing today. What up, big horn kid? And so I just want to see what this what this CEO is talking about as far as doing something for the people who actually make the money for these apps. Because if all drivers just decided, yeah, we ain't doing that, they would panic. That's why he didn't want to take away surge. Because at first, all that big talk, oh, we're worried about how much customers are paying. We want to look out for our customers. We want to do away with surge pricing so they get the best pricing and they don't have to pay a lot to get a ride and this and that. We're, drivers was like, well, ain't nobody picking their ass up then. Because we the ones that got to pick him up. The app don't pick nobody up. All the app is is on your phone. The app's on my phone. What up, Steven? My man. And if the app's on your phone and somebody needs a ride, that phone don't do much for you. You're still sitting at the at the event not being able to get home because you ain't putting surge on rides and everybody's doing UberX rides. Everybody's doing cash rides. And all the no surge lift rides are getting overlooked because if the drivers don't get paid, the work don't get done. That's just how it is. So until these apps put a little focus on the drivers, we are that part of the equation that gets that money coming through the door. Because if we don't accept the ride, they're not making money. And they like to talk about how many ride requests they get. Oh, we're getting, you know, two million ride requests a month. We're getting two million a week, two million a day, whatever it is. They always know how many ride requests they get. But how many actual rides do you get? based on how many requests are you getting? Because a lot of us got low ARs. So I already know, if I'm sitting at 20% AR, that's one out of every five rides. That's it, one out of every five. That's all I'm taking. So you get 500,000 requests, you might only get 100,000 of those rides answered. 400,000 are out the door. Steven, my man was, <laughs> Steven said, he said, get you some crusty, dusty donuts. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about, brother. Hey, I appreciate that, man. True, Bosa's going to love me. And I'm like, why is this dude always coming to Bosa? I was like, because people don't want me at Circle K no more. Them goddamn bum-ass donuts ain't working out for me. 
<laughs> my people out here taking care of me, making sure I can pull up the boat. So get some real donuts. Fuck them crusty dusties. <laughs> Motherfuckers flaking all in my lap and shit in my seat. I gotta get out and do motherfucking jumping jacks to get that shit off my clothes. I gotta go pick people up, man. Motherfuckers think I did a workout. I show up sweating and tired as a motherfucker. They like, what you been doing? Eating donuts. Damn, you sweating eating donuts? It ain't eating donuts is making me. I got a jumping jack, all this shit all over my clothes, man. These old crusty, dusty ass donuts. But I ain't got nothing else. Circle K is the only place in my area. <laughs> but now I'm starting to venture out. I'm going to Bosa. <laughs> Uber X with surge pricing is rocking San Diego. That's right, man. And that's what it is. That's what these apps need to realize. Drivers are not going to take any rides. Like I said, you can send out 500 requests, 500,000 requests, and only 100,000 of them are going to get answered because everybody's sitting at 20% AR. So you want to make sure your low AR drivers, the way these apps need to look at it is say, we need to get all of our low AR drivers to have a higher AR. Because the high AR drivers, we don't worry about them. They, they a bunch of idiots. We're not worried about them. They're, they're a non-motherfucking factor. That's what that lady said. They a non-motherfucking factor. <laughs> Six miles for $38. Hey, that's six dollars a mile, brother. That's what I'm talking about. Jimmy Dean, what up, JD? Says hello, Jeff. Thanks for all the tips and tricks. No crusty dusties today. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. This is rifles. I'm gonna ask him what cool items he is buying for himself and stealing our tips after stealing our tips. He said, This motherfucker got a new yacht. He's gonna he's gonna be at F1. I guarantee we see David Richard at F1. We're going to see a picture of that motherfucker using our tips to buy F1 tickets for him and his family. That motherfucker. <laughs> Somebody said, I want that deal you got on the Krusty Dusty Donuts at Quick Trip. Man, that motherfucker gave me two donuts for the price of one, and they was fresh. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. Because usually that motherfuckers get me, man. They get me. I'd be walking up the door almost $4 for two donuts. I'm like, these dusty motherfuckers almost got me, man. $4 for two donuts, but they was fresh. So I knew I was going to get taxed. And the motherfuckers gave me both donuts at one price. I was like, you got to be kidding me. This is my day. <laughs> yeah, but the trick about these apps, these apps don't need to look at the high AR drivers. The high AR drivers are not motherfucking factors. They're going to take anything you send regardless because that's just how they drive. You send them a 50 cent a mile ride. Oh, I got to stay busy. Take it. Dollar a mile ride, gotta stay busy. They'll take it. So they, they're a non motherfucking factor. You need to focus on your lay, low AR driver who are very analytical, very financially literate, that will say that ride's not enough for me. Those are the drivers you want to start taking more rides. And how do you get them to take more rides? You offer more money because they're analytical, they're financially literate. The drivers that are not financially literate who think, oh, I'm gonna make $100,000. Taking 50 cent a mile rides, that means you got to drive 200,000 miles in 12 months to make $100,000. You're not financially literate. You put 200,000 miles on that damn car in one year, you're not financially literate. You put 100,000 miles on your car in one year, you're not financially literate. You could be putting 30,000 miles a year on that car, making $100,000 if you're financially literate. Gotta stay busy. That's right, Leonard. Them motherfuckers be, they in their car jittery as a motherfucker. Gotta stay busy. Motherfucker can't sit still for five seconds. Like, go oh, sit in the parking lot. Can't, man. Gotta stay busy. Fucking desperados. <laughs> That's what we need to call them, motherfuckers. The decline desperados. They don't decline shit. <laughs> They're the anti-decline desperados. And like I said, if you're financially literate and you already got your plan out, you got your budget out, you know that in order to make $100,000, that I always use it as a benchmark. I'm, I probably won't make $100,000. I'll probably make about seventy or eighty, dollars but I bet I only drive 25,000 miles to get it. That's my whole point. Always base it on $100,000 and say, how can I get to $100,000 the easy way? If I do $3 a mile, guess what? All I got to do is 33,000 miles this year. I don't got to do 100,000 miles, 80,000 miles. Because these fools out there putting six, five and 6,000 miles a month on their car, going 72,000 miles a year, 80, 90,000 miles a year. We ain't got to do that. 30,000 miles is all we need to be driving. 30,000 miles at $3 a mile makes us $90,000 a year earners. And we're not using a whole lot of gas to do that. Steven says, I'm sitting here listening to Jay Watts on a 950 Surge Uber Pet Lounge. Hey, and my man Stanley Jenkins today, we're going to start calling um, Uber Pet. We're going to call that shit, what, Pet Patrol or oh, Paw Patrol. That's what it is, Paw Patrol, <laughs> like them fucking cartoons. What you want today? Oh, man, I'm on Paw Patrol. Yeah, that motherfucker got Uber Pet. I was like, shit. We be talking about everything, Harriet, Harriet Tubman, all of our little secret code words and everything. Shh, nah, man, we be on Paw Patrol. Shit, I'm on Paw Patrol. <laughs> 
Mama got that shit on Uber Pet cruising. <laughs> Gonna go to a, a really short trip area and use Paw Patrol. I'm on Paw Patrol, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna have a motherfucker stuffed animal, one of them little stuffed dogs with the police uniform on, sitting in my windshield. You gonna say, "Where's your Uber like?" I'm on Paw Patrol. I don't do Uber. I do Paw Patrol. <laughs> but I was like, we had a Paw Patrol driver today. What new app is that? It's the smart motherfuckers. We use Uber Pet and we trap surge. <laughs> We're a different breed. Yeah, man, we all 22% AR, true blue driver, baby. That's me, blue. And they try to call me a diamond driver. Thank you for being a diamond driver. I was like, motherfucker, I ain't been a diamond driver in like two years. What are you talking about? But they called me a diamond driver in that little email they sent me. I was like, that's got to be AI. Because ain't no way in hell I'm a, I'm blue as this all hell. Oh, man, look at that. Sitting at the train station, give a rider a ride home two miles stops. Two miles tops. There you go. Hey, and you got that 950, then you throw around throwing about $5, $13 for two miles, you almost $7 a mile. You want to make $100,000 at $7 a mile? Shit, you drive about 16,000 miles a year. That's it. 16,000 miles a year if you had $17 a mile and you had $100,000. That's financial literacy right there. Financial literacy is not waking up every day at 430, eating motherfucking tuna casserole and shit and trying to drive all fucking day. You fucking around eating tuna casserole in the car, driving around farting and shit, and these motherfucking customers are like, is that a different air freshener you use now? No, nah, motherfucker, he ate some tuna casserole for breakfast, old rotten motherfucker. He's trying to make $100,000 taking dollar a mile rides. It's like, we don't do that shit. I'm not going to be in the car that long, so I don't have to eat dinner in the fucking car. I don't have to eat breakfast and shit in the car. I ate a couple of crusty, dusty-ass fucking donuts. I'm cool because I'm only going to be in the car for about three four hours. I eat at home. And these motherfuckers riding around eating tuna casserole and fucking cold ass macaroni and cheese and shit. It's like you're doing it the wrong way. If that's your lifestyle, you're doing it the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fugalistic. <said. laughs> you know, Melvin said, I had a request the other day on Uber Pet. Of course, I said, doubt it and canceled it. I know they be trying to get your ass. They'll try to get you. Man. But I'm sitting up there saying the financial literate people. If we sat down with Lyft, we sat down with Uber, we said, listen, we don't have to drive 100,000 miles a year for you motherfuckers to make $100,000. Stop sending 50 cent a mile rides. Stop sending a dollar a mile rides. Don't do that. No driver should have to be on the street that damn much. We want to drive 30, 40,000 miles a year. If the average driver is driving 15,000 miles a year, cool, we'll do double. We'll do 35,000. Let's do 30,000, 35,000 miles a year. We could do that. It's about 3,000 miles a month, little than 1,000 miles a week. Just barely under a thousand miles a week. And with that, we can bring home 1500, 1600, driving, you know, 700, 800 miles a week. And that's only like about a hundred miles a day. We drive a hundred miles a day, we can bring home $1,500 a week. There should be no reason why we got to drive 1500 miles to bring home $1,500. That's fucking crazy. This is <laughs> Measure Reality said, Jeff, you must be scaring Uber and Lyft. I got all my tips last night 15 trips, 14 tips. Ain't been like that in a while. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> These motherfuckers see my video. They're like, I think we they figured it out. We're snagging all their tips, giving them a fucking dollar at a time. That shit don't work. I'm like, dude, this, this something don't work. Everybody start researching these motherfuckers and talking to these goddamn passengers. Take pictures of these phones. I keep it 100 on my videos. Like I tell motherfuckers, I am not an app employee. They don't pay me shit. I'm not sponsored by Uber and Lyft, so I can speak freely. First Amendment, I speak freely. Motherfuckers don't like the way I speak. They can bounce. I don't give a shit. It could be app employees listening to our videos. That's cool. I welcome to listen because. When they talk and we communicate, that's how we fix shit. That's how they going to find out we owned that bullshit. Just like my little video be saying, I see you, motherfucker. <laughs> I had to put that, put that shit in all my videos. I see you, motherfucker. Because we watching. We watching our money. Pocket watching. Watching our money. Yeah, exactly. They use them trips as an insurance company. Use premiums. They just keep it afloat. Yeah. And I don't care if people be like, man, you're going to get deactivated when they deactivated for telling the truth. That's my First Amendment right. I have a First Amendment right. I'm an American citizen. I could tell the truth. If I was slandering them and liable and lying, and that's something different, completely different. Yeah, please fucking deactivate me. Get me off the app if I'm lying like that. You motherfuckers know we telling the truth. They know what's up. And I show my screens. I record and I roll and I show my screens. So I hope David Richard and all these motherfuckers be like, this is really how, ain't no screenshots around here. No. I record the whole motherfucking deal. From the time I pick a motherfucker up or get a ride till after I drop them off, shit. I record that shit. This is Jeff B. Lie. Uber name is IP Freely. 
<laughs> That's funny shit. That's right, Mel, man. I keep it 100, brother. Hey, Jula said, I got an $18 tip last night. First tip in a week. I lost control of the car when it came through. <laughs> Thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker said I lost control of the car when it came. <laughs> That's some funny shit. Motherfucker about to lose control of the car. He saw the 18 come across the screen. Motherfucker screwed. Like, damn, is that for real? <laughs> Scared the shit out of his ass. That motherfucker said, Man, I lost control of the car. <laughs> that shit's funny as hell. Hey, but that's how it be, man. That's how the shit be for real. We running like this two live crew band in the USA. Hell yeah. Shit, they banning us in the USA. Because, I mean, and we need to sit down with these apps because we're partners. If we truly driving partners, I mean, a lot of us, like me, I'm not professional. They know I'm not professional. YouTube know I'm not professional. All these motherfuckers know I'm not professional. I'm just alive. I'm alive. You can either be alive or you can be professional. I'm alive. That's it. So if we're going to sit down, we're going to talk through some shit. We're going to get all this stuff uncovered. Take care of these families. Make sure they can take care of their families with the money they make. We can take care of ourselves with the money we make, and everybody's happy. But when you start playing us, that's when the shit hits the fan. I don't like that. I don't like being played like a sucker. I'm pretty financially literate, and I like to put that shit in my videos, and I explain how my numbers work. Today, a guy in my comments was saying, hell, you don't do it by minutes. You don't You do not do your calculations by the minute. No, there's too many fucking minutes in a year, way too many minutes in a year. If you got 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, and you got 365, that's too many fucking minutes. Like, I need at least 82 cents a minute. And no, no, fuck all that. I know how much I want in a year and how many miles I got to drive a year. So that means I need to break down my trips. That's it. So I break down my trips by miles. My car sits in parking lots. I don't drive around looking for it. The shit's going to come to you. Park that motherfucker. Don't go nowhere. Sit right where you at. And I guarantee there's going to be a ride a half mile away from you in about five minutes. So you got time to wipe your car down. You got time to, you know, drink you something, eat you something real quick. You only got five minutes because when that ride pops up, it's going to be three miles, $12. Go get it. And I'm not one of these drivers out there. I'm going to drive eight miles this way, 20 miles this way, six miles this way. Hey, I got a four mile ride, man. You've been driving for the last 50 fucking miles to find a four mile ride. You can find that shit just sitting still. So park your shit. A lot of these drivers can't do that, though, man. Got to be busy. My car got to move. Yeah, I'm like, fuck that. He says, yeah, we not be professional, but our riders love us. That's right, Mel, man. Shit, they get in the car hype, happy as a motherfucker. We got music playing, real shit. We talking to them like humans, not no motherfucking robots. Welcome to my vehicle. Please put on your seatbelt. Be ready to activate this ride. Man, fuck that. I be like, sup, Julie? Motherfucker come to the car. Hey, be walking all fucking cool. Because motherfuckers like it when you call them like that. What's up, Julie? Shit, motherfuckers get happy. They're like, oh, this is a real driver. This motherfucker's talking about some what's up, Julie. Everybody at the door, like, they feel more comfortable now because I'm not just some weird-ass motherfucking driver sitting there in the driver's seat waiting her she get in. I'm It'd be motherfuckers at the front door. I'm speaking to everybody at the front door. I'm like, hey, what up? Hey, I love that jacket, man. I'm a Bears fan. I love that jacket. And motherfuckers in the car are like, oh, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, shit, you got a cool driver because they see I'm a real motherfucker. I'm not fake. I'm not just sitting there and shit, like, getting in. Like, I'm looking, I'm about to kidnap a motherfucker. I'm just sitting here. And they be like, oh, shit. I'm going to come to the car and talk. There be motherfuckers walking up to the car, giving me dap and shit. We talking about cars. Pop the hood of the Jeep and shit, start chatting. And the motherfucker ride ain't even started yet. The lady still be out talking and shit in the driveway. And me and the dudes is up front with the hood up on the fucking Jeep laughing. And they be like, this dude's a cool-ass driver. <laughs> Like this motherfucker just pulled up, just talking with everybody, like he's welcome here and shit. Motherfucker, I am welcome. Y'all about to pay me, so I'm welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. It's and, and you're right, Bighorn. This is what I say, Kevin. You and you hear that shit in my videos. I cannot do trip radar, calculate, navigate traffic, not rearing the motherfucker, make sure somebody's not running a red light, make sure somebody's not coming out of quick trip too fucking fast and on size. You can't do all of that while trying to conduct business on that little bitty ass fucking rectangle phone on your screen. There's too much going on. Too much going on. So I pull my shit over. When I drop somebody off, I look for, I don't care if it's a church parking lot. I don't care if it's a damn, I just bet, I pull over somewhere. I just get off the road. That's it. And once you off the road, now you can really start scouting rides the right way. You can really focus. Those numbers start making sense because you're not trying to half look at a number. You think you see something that says 1.8 miles, but the shit was really 9.8 miles. But you're sitting there looking around too fast. You do that shit when you're driving. Pull over. Scout rides the white way. Like really hone in on the numbers that's on your screen. 
And that's what I do a lot. I hone in on them fucking numbers. I'm like, oh shit, when the road's empty at night, like late at night when it's empty, I can actually drive below the speed limit sometimes and not have to worry about shit. I'd be way out in the middle of nowhere. People know how Mesa is. I'd be out in Apache Junction and shit. You know, I'd be like going slow as a motherfucker, slow as a motherfucker. Can we deactivate trip radar? No, nah, I don't think we can deactivate trip radar. I think that's just, it's just always going to be a, a way to throw rides up to give you a choice or whatever. What Dom says, not going to pay 15 a week for lift regular. Nope, nope. Yeah, AK Love, you're right. You got to hit stop requests. And I'll talk about that a lot because if you don't use stop requests, you're going to start getting a whole bunch of rides and the offers keep coming because they know you're probably close to a surge area. So you're going to keep getting all these shitty rides, throwing it, throwing it. Nope, turn on stop new requests. Guarantee when that person get out of the car, you're going to be a block away from a $20 surge. Be like, dude, no wonder they were sending me all them damn requests. I'm a block away from a $20 surge. They wanted you to take those requests before you realize you was by a surge in area. Always use stop new requests. That shit should be a staple. If you letting your shit just run, 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 I mean, most likely you're probably within like the trip field area. You're within like a, a block or two of something. Like let's say you're at ASU and you're at a you're at Mill Avenue and every ride is like, let's say, a mile or two. You might not have to stop in the request because everything's going to keep being in that surge. So you're going to see, you know, $15 surge on everything that's coming anyways. But stop in the request, that's me. If I know I'm going, you know, five, six miles, I'm going to be out of the surge anyway. Might as well just stop in the request. You're not going to be in the surge anyways. Stop that shit. Go sit at the quick trip for a while. Wait till it pop in. <laughs> Tony said they should have a max surge next request button. <laughs> <laughs> exactly give me whatever the max surge is in the area fuck that shit like hey man and see that's the thing when them people out there when they know it's big money out there they don't want to pay it that's to get other drivers to the area that's not for you they want to get other drivers there and they're gonna give you some shit like you know the next ride you get is a dollar a mile but then they don't attract the driver that is gonna get that 15 dollar surge on a short ass ride and you was right there the whole time that's how they get you man like I said, and there, there has to be something, questions we got for damn David Richard. Because I tell you right now, when the ride share guy, I know how their channel operates, and I don't knock that shit. You know, I'm a smaller channel, so I could talk to motherfuckers in the chat and shit like that, and then not even knock us off our grind. But when you got a big channel like that, they're not going to be able to stop and say, hey, David, hold up for a second, David. We got a, a comment right now in the chat that is a really good question. Is They ain't going to be doing no shit like that. Those motherfuckers are like watching CNN. I mean, you're watching a live. That's it. This shit, you participate in the fucking live. We are making the live. This is what we do. So it's not like you're going to be able to jump in like me. I hit up the chat for com for questions and comments all the fucking time. Just because it is the content. This is a live. It's live. This ain't a recording. Mug. It will be recorded and play back later. But if this is a live, you should take some live questions and live comments right on the fucking spot. And if motherfuckers is pre-programmed, and you know how a lot of these pre-programmed canned-ass responses be. You're like, hey, you know what? What are you going to do for the driver? Well, for the drivers, we plan on making sure that they have high school diplomas by being supremely educated. That's them canned answers. Like, no. Read a motherfucking question out the thing. Be like, hey, man, Dom just said, how come you be fucking him over with the surges all the time? Read that shit. Read it. This is a live stream. It's live. And if motherfuckers can't, and YouTube don't care about people cussing. We got rappers on here. We got comedians. We got other podcasters who say shit. They say the N-word all the time. I mean, they don't give a shit what you say. YouTube going to pay you regardless. Don't worry about shit. Just keep it 100. Keep it real. Don't have no canned-ass answers. I don't like canned responses. I like real shit. If David Rich was like, listen, Jeff, I'm going to tell your ass something, motherfucker, because I see what the fuck you be up to. I'd be like, David, you invite to the barbecue, motherfucker. You are invited to the barbecue. That's the kind of response I'm looking for. This motherfucker just called me motherfucker. David, you my... Nah, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> like, motherfucker. <laughs> be like, motherfucking, uh, what's that dude? Uh, damn it, I forgot his name in training day. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. You want David to, to give you a real answer. But I understand they got to be professional. They got to look corporate. They got to put on this motherfucking image. I get it. I get it. But I'm one of them anomalies, man. I told motherfuckers I came from the hood. I was scrapping young as a motherfucker. The hood of St. Louis, street of St. Louis. Ask anybody how we got down. We did that shit. But we was always financially literate. We was always young and smart enough to get, yeah, exactly, Denzel. We were smart enough to go out and get that fucking money. And then we all ended up becoming financial people, having accounting degrees, business management degrees, you know, hotel management degrees. We all became people like that. 
So even though we still hood, like I said, you can take us out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of us. We remember where the fuck we come from and we just keep it real with you. That's all. Some people are scared of the hood. Me, I told motherfuckers, I have a problem driving at night. I mean, I'm not stupid. I know how shit is. I'm not going to sit on a motherfucking dark street with all my doors open and my windows down. I'm that sharp. That's where I'm from. But I just want people to keep it real, man. When we talk to these companies and these corporations that we're on YouTube and shit like that. We ain't in no boardroom. These are real drivers. Every driver can't be a, a professional, you know, upstanding boardroom type motherfucker. No, no. Some people just talk. Like we had a barbecue, like we had the basketball game, like we had a football game, like we had a family reunion. We just talk. And a lot of people can't take that kind of talk. They, well, the way you presented your question, Jeff, was not in the proper format. Motherfucker, it's Wednesday and I'm at home. There is no format in my house. I'm at home. So I'm going to talk to you like this, motherfucker. I'm not in no office. You two don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. So it's like people do that, man. It's like they, they want you to follow some type of pattern of how you are as a person in order to deem you whether or not you're acceptable fuck that we not the ones missing money we out here getting money and just like my man james was saying yeah if they don't ask the question that we need answer i'm definitely gonna be disappointed in the channel exactly exactly standpoint i'm gonna be disappointed that we didn't get actual answers that we all talk about all the fucking time we talk about shit all the time. So this is, we ain't new to this shit. We've been doing rides here. We ain't new to this. We don't want no nice new shit. We don't want to, oh, well, you know, is are we going to be able to get free wax certificates for our vehicles to make sure that our hoods are clean when we pull up to a house? Tell the people about that. Let, let's talk about the wax treatment we're giving all Lux Drive. Man, fuck a wax treatment. We're talking about money and why we getting screwed over. That's what we're talking about. This is what the community talks about. Oh, the, man, the interview would never be on this channel. But I'd bite that motherfucker. I'd say, dude, you could be who you want to be. You could wear shorts, a motherfucking tank top. You could be smoking a fucking blunt. I don't give a shit. Act like you're on Joe Rogan's podcast. Be like motherfucking Elon Musk. This is the richest man in the motherfucking world smoking a blunt on a podcast. I don't give a fuck about that. It's like, shit, come on, man. Let's talk. Let's, let's kick back and relax. And you will understand you as a human, not as a business person. And now we can talk business to business, human to human, get shit discovered. Motherfuckers be like, okay, cool. Now I understand what Lip is trying to do. I understand it now. Say, so y'all need to take care of some motherfucking drivers. We got drivers out here. We don't got deep pockets out here. We got shallow pockets out here. <laughs> exactly. Welcome to the Mike to the Mike Drop Podcast, where we'll be smoking a blunt with David Risher. <laughs> puff puff give, motherfucker. David be like, oh yeah, shit. I'm going to hit up Dara. This is some kush right here. Let me hit up Dara. Dara Kashashari. We got the kush motherfucker. Get on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Logan. I appreciate that, brother. What it do, champ? Doing Uber Eats and had to make Aiden's ass come grab this 24 pack of water up three flights of steps. <laughs> Hell yeah. You're like, dude, you need to come get this motherfucking water. I'm not taking this shit up three flights of steps. You motherfuckers need to have one of them goddamn dumb waiters just pull a fucking cord and just, man, fuck that. I appreciate that, Logan. Shoot. What up, Nicole? She's in the building. She's in the building. <laughs> hey, Dom said, Dara definitely smokes dope. <laughs> that motherfucker don't smoke weed. He smoked dope. <laughs> That motherfucker got a, he got a whole pack of some shit from 1965 in his bedroom. What is that? Oh, that's some dope. That's a doobie in that box, motherfucker. He don't even smoke the new shit. We got like Kush, motherfucker, all this shit in the dispensary, everything else. This motherfucker, Derek, got some dope. <laughs> it's like, what are you smoking? I'm smoking some dope. Would you like some? Like, dude, that's just probably 40 years old. Put that shit out. <laughs> motherfucker shit shooting like a sparkler. That motherfucker smoking that shit is sparkling at the end. It's like, that ain't even real. <laughs> oh, standpoint, pugilistic. I appreciate that, brother. Thanks for the channel. Hey, thank you guys for helping make this channel, man. Like I said, not all drivers can fuck with this. Really, they can't. We make a lot of good money. We do a lot of good things as far as strategy goes. We laugh a lot. We make jokes a lot. We chat like we're at the fucking barbecue. Ain't shit professional about this channel. This is a true driver's channel where we get down and we hang out. And I mean, people be in my comments putting shit, fuck, motherfucker, goddamn. And I laugh at the shit because I'm like, keep it real. Keep it real. That's it. Keep it real. When you on this channel, you ain't got to censor your fucking self. Now, when I got new people that come in sideways and they're trying to talk shit like, oh, you idiotic motherfuckers, I kicked them out the room. They in the wrong room. Fuck them. I don't fuck with them. You in the wrong room, dog. Math is down the hallway. Go learn some shit. 
But on my channel, man, I like when people just come kick it, you know, kick back. Show me who you are, man. What up, Huri? Huri into his house. But yeah, if you could look, I appreciate that. Thank you. Th and that's what I mean about this channel. You know what I'm saying? This is this is not a typical rideshare channel. And a lot of people might come to this channel. They're expecting somebody to explain what a swipe is and explain what a soft close and a hard close and, you know, how to open the door properly. We don't do that shit. This is an advanced fucking class. This is the advanced. We looking for profits. We got families to take care of. We don't want to do this shit all day, every day. I don't want to be on the road 10, 12 hours a day. If I can get out there, knock shit out in about four or five hours of driving, I'm leaving money on the street for other drivers. And y'all see me. I'll be on, on my app. I'm kicking out rides all the fucking time because there's other drivers that need that money. I might not need that money because I'm trying to go somewhere else. And other drivers, ooh, I'm going to get that $24, but it's taking me away from where I want to be. Swiper, no swiping. Exactly. <laughs> that's what we do. And Wes, that's what it is, man. We we This is a real channel for real people, real drivers that talk in the real way. There is no canned responses here. Everything is like from the heart. Everything's emotional and shit because making this fucking money, man, it's like, you know, we get in these streets and shit gets pretty tense. We get fucked over on people adding stops and then we don't get the money we feel we deserve. You know, we get canceled on after driving. I mean, a lot of shit happens. So this is a very emotional career field. And we deal with people every day. We pull up sometimes and the motherfuckers got, you know, a big ass dresser sitting in front of their house full of clothes. Like, yeah, I'm trying to take this dresser to my aunt's house. Dog, you need a U-Haul. You don't need my car. You need a U-Haul. We could break it down. We ain't breaking shit down. <laughs> like, you ain't putting that shit in my car. Thank you, Dom. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, hit that like button. Hit it. I think people say if you hit the like button, then the live stream goes into the algorithm. I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it don't. I know after the fact, you know, people hit the like button later. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the stop should be five bucks. Automatic. Automatic. Five bucks minimum. But they be giving like two dollars, three dollars. Man, shit. What Dom says yesterday, two students wanted to bring their whole life savings in my car. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Drew M. Drew M says the only question should be why are all fares trash and why is your rate card garbage? <laughs> that motherfucker handle that shit like a yes or no question. He'll go yes. Like no, nah, motherfucker. That's not. Who says why are all your rates trash and why is your rate card garbage? Yes. See, that's a canned response. That motherfucker, he ain't trying to keep it real with you. We trying to hear more than just a fucking yes. We want to hear like break that shit down. Why are your motherfucking shit's garbage? What's up, man? What's up? I want him to sit on that live stream and go, listen, for all you motherfuckers out there that need to hear this, I want him to say that exact sentence. The first sentence out of his mouth should be, let me let all you motherfuckers know. I want him to say that. Because if he says that, I'm going to tell you right now, that live stream is going to go through the motherfucking roof. That shit's going to go viral. Everybody's going to say, I'm driving for lift because these motherfuckers is G'd up from the feed up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be on that one, Logan. I'm going to go over there. Ride share guy. Yep, I'm going to be over there. I'm going to be over there. He says, I got to say, David Risher is solid. Dara, I can't say that for sure. <laughs> exactly. Well, David Risher, that motherfucker come from Amazon. So he's, he's a little different. Him and Jeff Bezos different. And I'll tell you something about Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos started like everybody else, a broke motherfucker. He started out broke motherfucker trying to fight against Barnes and Nobles. And we was like, there ain't no fucking way of Amazon going to beat Barnes and Nobles. Barnes and Nobles be having a line out the motherfucking door. I, don't, I can't even tell you where Barnes and Nobles is today. That's how bad Jeff Bezos beat the shit out of Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> and he was just an average, average, everyday motherfucker. And he became really, really rich. And he's almost like not even like an elite. Jeff Bezos is like, he's a really rich, cool motherfucker. That's all you can really say. He's a rich, cool. He ain't never said he's a pedigree. He ain't got no fucking pedigree. This motherfucker, he just like, hey, I'm rich. I happen to have a whole lot of fucking money. This is why I hang out. This is what I do. And he buys up shit and does shit and everybody hates him. And that's cool. Everybody hate every fucking body. And it's like, man, this is that's why I fuck with David. He knows the grind. He says, sorry, I just saw the notification. Hey, Jeff, what up, Drew, at your service? Am I going to do a live reaction? <laughs> I don't know, Silver Fox. I don't like. See, that's the thing. I might react to it. I'm not going to play their video on my channel, but I might do a reaction to it because I think we all deserve a chance to vent because I guarantee we ain't going to have that chance on the ride share. God they ain't going to let us vent. Motherfuckers won't talk. Hey, Dom, I appreciate that, brother. You a real one, too, man. Because I tell motherfuckers we grew up in a garage. We grew up working on cars, man. We grew up the hard way. 
And, and life ain't going to get no easier. The more technology comes out, the harder shit's going to be because we got to prove humanity still exists. We got to prove that as humans, we are still valuable motherfuckers on this planet. They trying to AI us out of the fucking equation, robot us out of the fucking equation. No, motherfucker, we real. We real. We wake up every fucking day on the grind, man, trying to get shit going. And if they don't, if they don't value that much about us, we need to know that right off the fucking bat. Because if these apps don't want to value who we are, shit, I need to know. What did Kev say? Got tipped $5 in quarters the other day. Ride her ass if that was okay. Told her there's a Washington on both, so they spend the same. <laughs> there's a Washington on both, baby. They spend the same, shit. <laughs> yep, yep. Hey, as long as it's money, shit, let's do it. Let's get it. And Andrew says, if I could do two lives, I would love to hear your raw thoughts. Oh, man, you know what? I think I'm going I'm to watch the live, hear how it all went, and I hope we all watch it. We all should pay attention to it. Because when the when I do my next live and we talk about it and we discuss what was happening in there, it's going to be a whole bunch of shit I can guarantee. They're going to miss a whole bunch of fucking balls, man, a bunch of pitches. They could be pitching his ass some of the most solid shit ever. But sometimes motherfuckers get scared to throw that kind of ball. They're scared to throw that kind of ball. And it's like, I'm one of those people that, that yeah, that's the thing. You don't want to do nothing that's political or vulgar or something like that. Not on that channel. This channel is cool, man. Like I said, some channels are not set up for that. Ride Share Guy's not set up. It's more of a corporate channel. This is more of a community channel. This is like a real motherfucking channel where we get down. We can talk, dig into the dirt of some shit. That's what we really do. That channel was kind of like, it's surface. It's very surface. But they have a lot of good information. And so you take the information they put on you. It's like going into class and then you leave class. You really go to a study group. You say, dude, we're going to go to the study group. Down at the bar down the street, we're going to play darts. We're going to play pool. We're going to talk about this motherfucking class. We're going to talk about this test. We're going to be getting fucked up and eat some chicken fingers while we at it. That's this channel. The chicken fingers and darts fucking channel. <laughs> that The ride shirt guy's more like you walk in with your motherfucking backpack. You sit down in the desk and you got to fucking keep your arms on the table. And you have to have a number two pencil. You can't bring a fucking ink pen. You have to have a number two pencil on the ride shirt guy. This motherfucker, you can bring a magic marker. Big ass kindergarten crayon. I don't give a fuck. Just jot the shit down. <laughs> Imagine said, it's the gangster chat. <laughs> Fucking gangster Uber, goddamn. <laughs> we G'd up over here. But that's what we do over here, man. We just we keep it 100. We just keep it real. And there's nothing wrong with having a different channel. Because like I said, in ride share, you don't want to have a whole bunch of channels that sound alike, look alike, act alike. Then you end up looking like all the motherfuckers that do DoorDash. And I say that shit on the all seriousness, not to fuck with them. But they will even tell you, all of our content is starting to look the same, y'all. They got to chop it the fuck up a little bit. Like they need to differentiate what they're talking about at certain times. And like the one person whose delivery I really like, I really like Dash and Traders delivery. Like I said, that motherfucker remind me a lot about me, man. He remind me a lot. I like his delivery. I like how he presents DoorDash because he presents that shit almost how I do ride share. Serious, but he still got his hood shit thrown in there and he still get out and do his work. And so, you know, I, I like how that Jesus, bro, you got to dump the hat and put the CU hat back on. <laughs> I know it, man. I know it. Uh, the Jeff gonna rename his channel the Ride Chair Gangster. We got enough the Ride Chairs, the Ride Chair Gangster, the Ride Chair Hustler, the Ride Chair Guy, the Ride Chair Garage. We're gonna be the Ride Chair Fuck Ups because we fuck this shit up. <laughs> They're gonna say, I'm gonna go to the Ride Chair Fuck Ups. That's a cool channel. Why? Because we fuck this shit up. <laughs> yeah, man. Shay, Dash a Trader, he a real one, man. I like the way he delivers. Because when he delivering his shit, I know it's DoorDash, but I can watch his shit. I can listen to him. Like, when I'm cooking breakfast and I'm doing shit in the morning, I play a lot of podcasts, especially when they get a little long because I'm doing shit and I don't have time to be fucking with no channel. So I'll sit there and play his shit, and I'll just, like, be cooking breakfast, whatever, this and that, and I can hear him in the background. He's funny as a motherfucker, boy. He be like, stop playing with me, man. <laughs> he be doing that shit. I be rolling laughing. Come on, man. Stop playing with me. <laughs> I like this dude's a fucking trip. He's a fucking trip. <laughs> but he real with it, though. He real with it. I like that shit, man. Yeah. DoorDash is actually profitable. Yeah. DoorDash is more profitable than Uber Eats, I think, because on Uber Eats, you can get fucking tip baited. That's the thing. Uber Eats is a trick app. These motherfuckers let people pull the tip away from you. You know how many people do that shit when they find out it, it can be done? Uber Eats is a fucking hustle now. So you got to be in a really good area with good people not to get fucking tip baited. So with, with DoorDash, they don't do that shit. So that's one thing I do say DoorDash is on the up and up with. They don't allow motherfuckers to pull a fucking tip back. Either you're going to get a tip or not. 
And a lot of times, if I see some shit that don't got a tip, I wouldn't fuck with it. Like, no, I'm good. I'm good. What up, Duato? Duato's in the building. I, hey, man, we... <laughs> he said, yeah, that's, I still look at that shit, the ride share gangster. That's funny shit. Crusty, dusty gangsters. That's what we is. The CDGs, baby. We got to come up with a motherfucker. This is CDG, baby. CDG. Yeah, baby. What's that? We the crusty, dusty gangsters, bitch. I hit you in the face with a motherfucking... <laughs> throw a big-ass fucking jelly donut at a motherfucker. <laughs> They be like, I thought dude was going to shoot me. This motherfucker threw a donut out the car and hit me. We just drive past a group of kids. Drive by, bitches. We have a whole motherfucking thing of glazed donuts just launching the motherfuckers. <laughs> they be like, these motherfuckers came by in a car with some hoodies and rags on, and they threw donuts at all of us. Who are these guys? Oh, man, that's some crusty, dusty gangsters, man. They're a bunch of ride share dudes. <laughs> you better watch the fuck out. They hit you in the back with a jelly donut, make you look like you got shot. <laughs> Uh oh, driven dash. I delivered a Caden order the other morning, DoorDash. It was a donut shop. <laughs> it was it for a donut? Got paid $40 and they gave me two donuts. Hey, the donuts was the best, though. That's the thing. Fuck the $40. Give me the donuts. <laughs> the Waddles said a 5 day old donut will knock you out. Like, yeah, man, give me that's the Krusty Dudgeon Supreme. Give me that one I had sitting on the kitchen counter. I'm finna blast this motherfucker. <laughs> Man, Melzi, this is Tuber University too. Hey, I'm telling you, man, that that Turo with Uber mix is gonna come one day. Motherfucker, ride your driver, just show up at your house, watch your kids and shit for you while you run to the store and everything. You drive his motherfucking car to the store. You're like, cool. Because like, what is this? This is Tuber, man. This is Turo. You renting my car while I'm at home, babysitting your fucking kids for extra five dollars. <laughs> it's like, yo, well, this baby still need his diaper change. Extra fifteen, fifteen dollars for a baby. Cool. Give me extra fifteen dollars on the Tuber bill. Fuck that. You're like, man, this is crazy shit. Uber Prime in the building. Mike, yo, what's good? Yeah, we all just kind of warming up before, you know, this this David Risher interview. And, and hopefully, like I said, hopefully we get some true meat gritty. I don't want to hear no shit that we already know about because there's too much shit in Russia that we we done talked about so much shit already. Oh, yeah. In order to remain active, you must have this many rides completed when you're renting and your AR must be in order to be on this tier. I don't want to hear no shit like that. No shit about no platinum, no diamond, no well, cancellations have to remain under such and such. So you get your cruiser report, your smoother cruiser report. Fuck all that. No, we need some real serious questions because we some real serious people out here making some money to take care of some bills. Yeah, man, it's like and and, and I know a lot of times. A lot of the people who do interviews, they'll send the interviewer questions and the person being interviewed will say, well, you can't ask that because that's in litigation. You can't ask that because we're still going. We can't ask that. And it's like, damn. So basically, this interview is going to be me asking you motherfuckers. How many employees do I got now? How many employees you guys got now? Thirty five hundred. Perfect. Oh, that's the end of the interview. Thank you so much, Dave, for coming by. We appreciate that. We're like, where are the rest of the questions at? Oh, he fucking blacked all of them out. That's all we could ask. <laughs> they send the motherfuckers the questions up front. And it's like, no. Let this motherfucker come over here. You're like, David, after you leave, we're going to have you go over there to Uber Jeep AZ. He's like, man, fuck Uber Jeep. That's what we looking for, baby. Come on over with that same energy, motherfucker. Bring that same energy. Fuck you, Jeff. Let's go, David. Fuck you, too. Let's do this shit. <laughs> They'll be like, what kind of interview is this? <laughs> exactly, man. Because uh, he said, I ignore that Uber tier program. That's my in my personal app. Yeah, because it don't the tears don't make a difference, man. It really don't. Because it's like what makes a difference. Like a lot of people used to be like, if you decline too much, you're not going to get any good rides. You're going to get a bunch of shit rides if you decline too much. We've been declining like crazy for like almost a year and a half, two years, and all of us still getting better news. I mean, we're getting better fucking rides. I was like, it's going to be a Fox News interview. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Why do we get docked for canceling? Why do we get throttled? How do we get under? I mean, we need real shit. Like we drive, we drive. This is where to get the oil filters in bulk for Mercedes. Oh, hey Logan, I got mine off of eBay, and I bought six filters for twenty four dollars right off of eBay, man. And it was from some company. They do shipping out of a warehouse out of California, and I mean each filter I think it was like twenty four dollars a piece, and I got all six for twenty four dollars. But yeah, I went and just type in your make and model, put oil filters, and then go look for bulk. It'll say six. Get the ones that said you can get one or two and it'll show up a lot quicker. So you can order one just if you need to do the oil change immediately. Order that one, but hurry up and order the six right behind it. The six might take about three weeks to show up because this is some warehouse somewhere out here and they'll get them to you, though. Shit, I still got about fucking 
probably four left. I got about four left, and I bought them motherfuckers a long time ago. We need to know why do you get suspended for passengers saying you're not making way to them? That too. But see, also, we need to know a lot of things like why is there no investigation when a passenger makes, you know, makes a complaint about a driver? Why is the driver immediately deactivated with no investigation whatsoever? Why are people deactivated with very ambiguous as information? We didn't know shit like that. Like, I would like to know. Why do you deactivate people just by saying due to this and that? It's like, no, no, due to shit, due to nothing. We need to know exactly what trip was it? Who the hell said it? What day was it? What night was it? Because anybody can say anything. Somebody from three fucking weeks ago could be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, This guy in his BMW, he just he called us a racist name. Yeah, he called us a racist name. And next one, I'm deactivated with no investigation, no nothing. I mean, they need to put an end to that shit. But see, they so focused on customers, they don't give a fuck about drivers. And I say that all the time, they don't give a fuck about us. Because actions speak louder than words. Motherfucker tell you, oh, we care about our drivers. We love our drivers. 30 minutes later, you're deactivated. Your fucking money is held up. You're like, wait a fuck, I thought you said you love drivers. We do, but this guy said you said something racist about him. I didn't even pick that motherfucker up. What is he talking about? I don't even know him. Oh, well, you know, we got to follow his word first. So you need to quit that shit, man. It says, we need to know why a BMW doesn't qualify for extra comfort, but a Honda does. <laughs> that's funny shit. Exactly. I'm only in for six months. That's it. That's fucking crazy shit. And, they, and we need to ask, I would like to know this shit. Why do we have our picture on there? Like my picture, my actual real authentic fucking picture. But you can't put a picture of my car on the app to show my because right now my car likes a fucking big ass orange ass pumpkin cartoon car. Motherfuckers be standing right in front of my car, not even knowing that it's my car. I'll hit the fucking horn. Burn, burn. Sarah. Oh, we did. Oh, it said orange BMW. This is kind of like reddish sort. I didn't think I was like, yeah, motherfuckers. It's like if they don't put a real fucking picture on my of my car on my app. Because I drive at night. Daytime, it might look kind of oranges, but at night, it's darker out. And it looks like it. So just throw the motherfucking picture of the actual car on there. Instead, I look like the motherfucking Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. I'll pull that shit up. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm looking at this damn picture. I'm like, I'm like, that car don't even exist in reality. That's a fucking cartoon. That's not even a real car. Put my actual car on there so people know who the fuck I am when I pull up. They'll walk out looking for almost a fire engine reddish type of fucking BMW. Lisa, what's good? You're second. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> said my, my car like a Flintstone station wagon. Exactly, man. And it, they always say that shit. They, I walk out the fucking, I mean, I got to hit the fucking horn and wave a motherfucker down. They walk up looking at me. Oh, we didn't think this was the car. We saw it sitting here. Like, yeah, you was about to time out, motherfucker. I was about to cancel your ass and drive off. He was like, but they'll just walk out the building, be looking around and shit. And I'm like, okay, one of these motherfuckers got to be the one. There's like 30 people on the front of the building. And it's like, at the last minute, they come popping out. Jeff, like, yeah, orange BMW. Oh, and I'm thinking to myself the whole time, that motherfucking app, man, that goddamn app. And then on the Jeep, they got a two door. They have an image of a two door Jeep on the lip app. I don't, they don't even let motherfuckers drive two doors. How do you not let a motherfucker drive a two door Jeep on your app, but you have a two door Jeep as the image for the car that's supposed to be pulling the fuck up? Who the fuck's doing this stuff? The, humans can't be running this app. This got to be all AI. This shit's stupid. It's stupid, man. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Lisa. Now I love the camera. Oh, I've been I've been working in the studio trying to get this shit going right all the time. I've been trying because I know a lot of times, you know, the studio's not set up right. And it's like uh, that part. I like that, Dom. How many passengers are coming? I like that. They need to be the first app that says that. How many passengers are coming? Can we get paid a little extra for multiple passengers? Can we get that? Because if a motherfucker's bringing three or four of their friends with them, if you're bringing three or four of your friends with you, charge the three or four friends two, three dollars a piece. They can Venmo the motherfucking account holder. They can all give them two dollars in cash. But the driver should be making money on all these fucking people, all of them. And these are the kind of questions we would like to ask to see what their response would be to it. Even if they say, well, we can't do that. Why? Why couldn't you? Well, because, you know, legal reasons, we have to say only the account holder is all we're responsible for in an accident. No, because in an accident, all these motherfuckers would be covered. Come again with that shit. Try it again. Try it again. Man, hey, they, Logan, they don't want me on there. And the thing is, I used to do, I was a corporate guy. I can sit there and chat with a motherfucker all day without saying two cuss words. I could do it. 
But I like my channel because it's real and it's authentic and it's like the energy of who I am. It's the real fucking energy of me. I'd have to tame my shit down to be on their channel a little bit. But it's possible. It's possible. But a lot of motherfuckers wouldn't like me, though. Just because, for one thing, I'm very, I'm different. I will tell you that I'm very different. Like, when people see me in stores and they see me as an athlete and this and that, they never assume that I have a fucking accounting degree and I was a corporate fucking accountant, you know, on an executive fucking level, following my name with the SEC every fucking year when we did our financials for the 401Qs and shit like that. They they never believe or the 10Qs and the 10Ks. We had to follow all that shit. They wouldn't even understand me. They'd be like, wait a minute. We thought you were just some old idiotic ass fucking basketball player or something. Actually, no, no. I ran track and I'm an accountant. <laughs> it's like, so it was like, exactly. And like I said, I have kids. My kids will tell you, even when they were younger, I can speak to kids all day. I can go talk to kids. Every, I worked at a school for a year and a half. I don't cuss at everybody. Sometimes you just know when motherfuckers is cool. When motherfuckers is cool and you can just be you. Kick back and just be you. Yeah, exactly, Logan, man. This is what we do, man. We we in a garage laughing and shit, cussing, building bikes, cussing out motherfuckers on the phone at the bike shop, and they cussing back. I just say, well, you the motherfucker who put the goddamn air filter on backwards. Like, motherfucker, you didn't give me the goddamn instructions, you raggedy motherfucker. Well, come get another one, man. You motherfuckers crack. And, and we go to the fucking bike shop, we all laughing and cracking up and shit. It was like, we don't take that shit personal because we all grew up like that. We grew up like that. So it's different when you grew up around motherfuckers playing spades. And motherfuckers, you know, slapping dominoes on the table going, yeah, bitch, I'm just trying to show you the spinner, man. I'm trying to show you the spinner. And it's like, OK, you you grew up around that kind of energy. That energy is you because that's how everybody survived where we were. It was just cool. It was just cool. And then you grew up and you told, OK, now you need to be a little different now because being you is not what's acceptable now. It's like, no, maybe being you is not acceptable. motherfucker. you don't know me like that. <laughs> it's like, that's just how I am. The Jeff and Vegas counting that dope, man. I used to be. I used to be. Man. And that's for real, Don, man. I like to speak. I like to speak to, to David as far as, you know, asking a real question and getting a real response back. But you got to understand corporate money. And that's one thing. Like, people wonder why I retired when I was 38 years old. They said, dude, why would you get out of corporate America at 38? You had a huge, huge, like, I was third in row at Diamond Resorts. Diamond Resorts merged with Sun Terry. I was third in row to run Diamond Resorts when I was at American Wagering. I was like second or third in row to run American Wagering. And people are like, why did you walk away from corporate America? Because I'm too fucking real. People just always tell me, we cannot believe you the fucking accountant, man. You were like the accountant of this place. I'm like, yeah. I pull up on a motherfucking CBR 1000. Goddamn, you know, they just saw me on the highway doing a motherfucking Willie. They're like, I swear I just saw you on the highway doing a Willie. I was like, yeah, I was coming up the own ramp. <laughs> Cop stopped me one day. This shit's funny. So I'm going to work. I'm coming on the on ramp, getting on the fucking highway on my CBR 1000. I come around. I hit that motherfucker. I pick that bitch up. As soon as I picked it up, all I hear was rear, rear, rear. Right behind me was a cop. I never looked in my rear view mirrors. <laughs> that motherfucker said, he was like, nice willy. But I got to give you a ticket. I was like, that's cool, bro. I said, dude, he was like, that was a nice willy. <laughs> I remember that he had a big ass motherfucking cop SUV. Motherfucker was right. I hit that corner. I said, Burr, came around. Burr, 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 burr. I was like, shit, man. Put the motherfucker back down, pulled it over, put the kickstand down. He was like, nice Willie. But I got to give you a ticket for that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's right, man. That's right, man. It's a new day and age, brother. It's a new day and age, man. Like I said, we got to learn how to stay human. So many people have become desensitized to being human, man. We out there shooting each other, shooting up schools, you know, shooting it at birthday parties and shit like that. People are desensitized to being human. I just want to see motherfuckers do good. And if you're not doing good, I want to try to help you do good. If you're like, man, my car is breaking down. Well, show me your motherfucking car because it might be some easy as shit. Show me your car. What you know about cars? A little bit. <laughs> and that's just how I am, though, man. It's like, you know, I want to see people do well. What up, oh, three? What up? And I'm one of those people that I still believe that, you know, I don't want to be tough on the motherfucking Internet, so tough on the Internet that I got to look over my shoulder in real fucking life. Like the one lady who was tough on the Internet down in Atlanta, she was real tough on the Internet and shit. And somebody shot up her motherfucking the black SUV Uber that she was driving in and nobody even know who shot it up because she was always tough on the Internet fucking with people. And it's like, you know, we got to stay human. So when I'm walking around chatting to people, I could go to any store out here, talk to motherfuckers, people like, hey, how you doing, man? All right. And we just laughing and joking in the store, people at Home Depot and shit like that. 
I don't think I got to go around and be rugged. I don't have to be rugged. When we was little in the hood, we had to be rugged. You go to somebody's neighborhood where you don't know people, you got to be ready to stand your ground at any moment. You walk through Greenbrier, you got to be ready to stand your ground. You're like, shit. Like, hold up for a second. You walk up in a motherfucking Greenbrier, you walk up past the basketball courts, and these motherfuckers looking at you, so you got to kind of look hard back. But that's young. That's when we were young, and we had to be like that. We don't got to be like that no more. Yeah, exactly. We don't got to be like that. We can just walk in and just speak to everybody, be cool with everybody, let everybody know shit's good. And I don't have to, you know, be professional or be corporate when I do it. I don't have to walk in like, good morning, Jimmy. How are you doing? How's that coffee you ordered this morning? I don't got to be like that. I'm like, hey, what's up, dog? Shit. Man, just working, man, trying to make this money. Hey, keep at that shit, dog. Keep at that shit. And you just keep walking on the aisle and you just pick up the shit you're trying to buy. But I let these motherfuckers know I'm real. I'm human, dog. I see you, man. I see you. It's like, this, I'm not walking through ignoring motherfuckers. I don't just walk through with my blinders on, act like I can't see nobody around. I speak to anybody. Man, old ladies walk up. I love that shirt because they see I carry myself as an approachable person. But then my channel, when people be on my ride share channel, especially back when I first started, you know, how I was doing shit. Oh, man, you this, yeah, you too rough. You too abrasive. You too this. I don't give a fuck. Then don't click on my shit. I don't know what else to tell you, dog. But I'm not going to change just to appease you. I don't know you like that. And you don't know me like that. So that's why, you know, you got channels like the ride share guy and stuff like that. Those are the corporate level channels. Those are not the community down to earth. Let's keep it 100. Let's dig into this shit. Let's say what we want to say. I'm not scared of getting deactivated. The apps don't give a fuck about me. I know they don't give a fuck about me. I don't give a fuck about them either. We just make money together. That's it. It's a business relationship. It ain't got shit to do with person. It's all business. That's it. But a lot of channels have to play that role. You know, they got to play that game. And I'm cool with that shit because I was corporate and I know how that shit works. I know how it works. But we got a lot of drivers on my channel that be like, dude, all we do is we go out, we abide by the terms of service, and we make this fucking money. That's it. Do we have to like these apps? Nope. Just like motherfuckers don't like their jobs and they be looking for second and third jobs and looking to quit their job and retire from their job. They don't like their shit either. What up, King James? But these raggedy motherfuckers, yeah, exactly. The best drivers are people persons. That's it, Waddle. That's it. <laughs> Dom said, I'll buzz back. Fuck that. <laughs> Hell yeah, shit. You're right. You're right, Dom. I ain't mean, never fake a change for nobody, man. Because that's the thing. When you stand on who you are and you stand true to who you are, people know how to approach you. They know what to expect from you. It's the fake motherfuckers. Nobody knew. So it's real skittish and real, like, you don't know how to deal with a motherfucker who be faking shit. You don't know how to deal with that person. Cause you don't know if they left today or if they right today. You don't know how they coming. But when I, motherfuckers deal with you, if you always kept it 100 and you standing on what you stand on, they going to know how to deal with you. And when we out here, we driving, you know what I'm saying? We, we abide by the terms of service. We make money the right way. We help each other make money the right way. We try to, you know, focus on profits. We run our shit like a business. We don't run our shit like we're app employees. We're not app employees. We don't work for them. We work with them and we all make fucking money. That's how we make money. If they don't like that about us, and clearly they don't because they think a lot of drivers make too much money, which is why they keep taking money. What up, E-Love? What up? What up, Uber driver? Shane. Shane's back. And they don't like the fact that a lot of us drivers have figured out the game to make money. We got 24, 25-year-old kids out here driving right now making $100,000 a year at 24, 25 years old. A lot of these motherfuckers that went to college, they got business degrees, they're only making 65000 Like, damn, man, this, I'm making 65000 This motherfucker's 24 years old, pushing the big-ass fucking bins, making about 120000 And gonna make more. And gonna make more. Because the smarter you drive, the more you make. What up, Coach E-Live? This is what we doing. This is what we doing. Exactly. And when they sit and they see how we live, the amount of money we have to invest in other things, the amount of money we use to really live our life with. People get jealous of that shit, man. And I don't see why, because I would be upset if we were all on welfare. I would be upset that because I would say my taxes are not going to streets and roads and schools and better in the community. My taxes are going to somebody who's going to be buying like Jordans and have to do. No, I don't like people on welfare. I'm trying to get everybody off that shit so the sky can be the limit. Because on welfare, there's a ceiling over you. You can't pass that ceiling. I don't like that. So when I see people struggling, I see my first thing is I'm going to save you money because I'm going to help you do your breaks. You don't need to go pay $1,800 to the shop to get all four of your breaks done. You're not paying at $1,800. That's going to put you too deep into the hole. Go out and get the brakes. Okay, the brakes and the rotors and all that shit rang you $340 because you needed rotors because you drove on that shit too long. Cool. You only $340 in the hole right now. 
out of the 1800 you only spend 340 now let's sit down and get down to brass tax and figure out how to put that shit in and we do it we sit down and we help that now that that person did his own breaks you know instead of the 1800 they spent they only spent maybe 1400 i mean they saved 1400 so you saved about 1400 dollars out of the whole deal that 1400 was probably your rent that month your mortgage that month and you was gonna get that shit away to somebody and that's what makes people struggle giving out too money too much money makes you struggle so I've always had a channel from the beginning. You look at all my old videos. You can look at all the comments in those old videos, the repair videos, stuff like that. When I was building my Jeep and shit, people still comment on those videos to this day because we're helping each other out. We're helping each other from going broke. We don't want nobody to be on fucking welfare. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to help lift people. If I'm not helping you make money, I'm helping you save money. Because just like back in the day, a penny saved is a penny earned. They used to say that shit when we was little. We never understood what that meant. Break master's mad at you. <laughs> exactly. We say a penny saved is a penny earned because that penny is going to sit there and all of a sudden you're going to invest that money into something else at some point because you're not giving it away. You're not spending it to somebody. So the moment you're making all of this money, you're saving all this money, you're stacking all this money to the side, that's leverage you have. <clears throat> and when you get leverage against somebody trying to do something to you because you've got money stacked into the bank, they can't fuck with you. You got leverage. You've got leverage. So when somebody says, oh, man, uh, we just we want to keep people desperate. Because when you keep people desperate, that's that's you losing your leverage. You're too desperate to say, I don't want to take no dollar a mile ride. When you ain't got no fucking money left, you have to take it. You're desperate. This channel pulls people out of desperation. We say, stop driving desperate, drive smart. And like one guy today tried to say some shit. Oh, man, everything you saying, man, it's old news. I say, you know what, man? We've been saying this shit for years. The shit you trying to say is old news, motherfuckers. Like, don't come. Y'all don't think you even know where the fuck you at. There's some new dude commenting on my channel. Oh, man, everybody knows every market is different. Everybody, like, motherfucker, we practice this shit, and we put our practice into We apply this shit, and we make videos of how we apply our knowledge. That's what these videos are, proof of us applying what we've been saying for years. That's all it is, proof. And this dude want to come on the channel acting like today was the first day I posted a motherfucking video. I was like, no, you have no idea where the fuck you are. And I can't stand when motherfuckers walk into a classroom not realizing that this class has been going on all fucking semester. Motherfucker, you are walking in. It's December. Class has been going on since late August. You walking in December acting like you saying some brand new shit. We were talking about the shit you saying back in August. And I don't like that. That's why I tell motherfuckers, pay attention to what room you in. When you walk into a room, pay attention to where the fuck you at. Because you could be around some motherfucking neuroscientists and you walk in like, oh, well, this, this, this. Motherfucker, do you realize everybody around you is a neuroscientist? Do you realize that? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, because you just walk in running your motherfucking mouth. Slow your ass down. Look around some comments. A lot of smart drivers all up and down through the comments. And if this dude would have took five minutes to either look at the video or look through the comments of any video, he would have said, damn, there's a lot of smart ass drivers on this channel. This channel is full of intelligence. Holy shit. And how do you think we're all making the money we make now? We made it through a rough ass summer. A rough summer. Only maybe two or three of us couldn't hack into the markets we were in in the summer and had to go get a W-2. Maybe only two or three of us. So that's a very low percentage of people who couldn't make it in their market. The most of us, we made it in our markets. We made it in our markets through the bullshit by being very selective with what we were doing. Now the football season's here, we can splurge a little bit. We can work a few more hours, make a little more money. We can start doing things now to stack up for the slow period that we know is coming. And we know that shit's coming. A, yeah, exactly, Kev Van. <laughs> Just videos are better training than that BS the apps have. Because yeah, the apps are going to have you. They're going to they gonna indoctrinate you, not educate you. You got indoctrination, you got education. Everybody knows about indoctrination. Most of us went to public school. We were probably indoctrinated. And we know that now because now we're educated. So the only way you'll ever know that you're indoctrinated is when you become educated. Because as you're being indoctrinated, you really think you fucking smart until you realize there's other information out there that somebody distracted you by only telling you half of the story. The videos we do is the whole fucking story. The comments in the chat, that's the whole fucking story. There is no holding back information. There, Like I tell motherfuckers, there is no secrets in ride share. If anybody need to know some shit, Harriet Tubman, ain't no motherfucking secrets in ride share. We tell you the whole fucking story. Because of anything else, we're going to educate you on how to take care of your family, how to make you, how you go out and use make the highest profits you can make using the lowest wear and tear in your fucking vehicle using the lowest amount of fuel i show my fucking gas tank how many other youtubers show they motherfucking gas tank in their videos because they full of shit they will sit there and blow through a whole motherfucking tank of gas and be like 
Oh, yeah, I just made $180 a day, but it took you 300 fucking miles to do it. Be real, man. Be real. And that's why I like to show my gas tank because I show people everything. If I fuck up and I don't do what I'm supposed to do, this shit won't be where it's at. And I don't rush somewhere in here. I'm trying to fill that motherfucker back up again. No, fuck that. When I put gas in on a day, I don't fill up again to that shit's all the way down to a quarter. Sometimes even lower than a quarter. Because I remember when I was driving once on my video, I had like 56 miles left till empty. It's like two motherfucking gallons. <laughs> and I was like, shit, man. See, I agree, but right. I need to get my hours up for the stipend due. It's on September 30, so I'm set settling, damn it. Yeah. You got to get your hours up, man. I'm the same way. I tell motherfuckers in all my videos, I need to be on the road more. I need to be on the road more. And I'm getting to that point because the weather in Arizona is changing. Now it's in the 80s all the time. Now when it drops down to the 70s and 80s, I'll, I'll be ready to drive a lot more. Because I like to roll my windows down. I like rolling the windows up, using the AC, running my fuel mileage down too low. Now I can roll with the windows down. Shit's going to be a little different. It's cooler out. I can roll now. Yeah. Gas is back up. And now that gas is back up, like Dom says, gas is back up. The fares are starting to drop. People are trying to drop. So we out ch surge chasing like fucking crazy. That's why I tell motherfuckers, use that Uber pet button. And Juan Vargas was saying, oh, I use my Lux Black. I'm like, yeah, you got to figure something out. Use Lux Black. Use Uber pet. Figure that shit out. So because if we don't try to offset the prices of gas, we're operating diminishing marginal returns the more we drive the less we gonna fucking make because now the price of gas is up the price of gas is up now oh man i remember they was giving us like 50 cents a ride and gas or something weird it was some weird shit like that 50 cent a ride and fuel i only do like 15 rides a day that's it so i do 15 rides a day so don't give me six dollars a day in gas that's all they're gonna give me is six bucks that's it i'm like okay cool whatever yeah exactly we're screwing unless we have electric cars i wonder if they're gonna get them some kind of stipend for electric cars we're going to give you five kilowatt hours for free. <laughs> Some shit. I don't know. What are they going to do for electric car? Electric car is going to be like, oh, man, this is fucked up. Man. Hey, app, uh, all Star Lobby says, how do you use Uber Pet? Oh, brother, you ain't seen the last. Hey, I've put that shit in the last two or three videos. I've been using that shit like crazy. Because what you do with Uber Pet, like if you go look at some of my videos, you'll see that shit. You'll see me driving. And you will see me toggle through my screens real quick. I'll toggle through my screen. I'll take, I'll put it on Uber Pet real quick. Take it off UberX Shared real quick. Because you can't just take off UberX Shared because you need to have something activated. So I hurry up and I go to motherfucking Uber Pet. Hurry up, turn off UberX. Get out of that screen because they'll try to throw you a ride real quick. And once you're stuck on Uber Pet, they're not going to send you an UberX ride. So you're cool. You can cruise now. Now you're comfortable. You don't got to rush. You see a surge in the area. And you go... I'm going to make it to that $15 surge over there. They're not going to be sending you UberX requests to knock you off your motherfucking grind because you're not on UberX. So you just keep cruising, keep cruising. The next thing you know, you're like, shit, I'm sitting on $15. Put that shit back on UberX. <laughs> Man. Oh, Andrea says, I love your videos. Also, my dad was so happy when he said you when he saw you make a video about him, Kitty Meow Boo. Hey, there's Kitty Meow Boo. There's Kitty Meow. Andrea was a, yeah, we was calling your dad Kitty Meow Boo for a couple of days. <laughs> he jumped in like, wait a minute. I'm a guy. I'm not Kitty Meow Boo. That's my daughter's account. What's up, Andrea? <laughs> Tell you that. Sorry about that. He, he need to get his license plate to say Kitty Meow Boo. <laughs> oh, stop. No problem, brother. No problem. And like I said, we do that, man. We we try to help each other out because there's a way to make this money and a way to offset all of our expenses and everything like that. And we trade, like somebody told me the Uber pet trick a long time ago. I share it with other people. People tell us all kind of tricks and a lot of things that we may not want the engineers to fix. If we find something weird with the app, like, oh shit, I didn't know this was supposed to work. We don't share it on my channel. And I tell people, if you find something that weirdly doesn't work right on your app, email me uberjeepaz at gmail.com they do this this kind of works on my app i just got an email the other day one lady she was like i think she was ninth in line at the airport and it was like 30 40 something people at the airport she was like wait a minute how am i ninth the ninth car at the airport in the queue but it's 30 or 40 cars sitting here on the app it was just, it was weird how she i'm like i think the app is glitching and i told her that shit too she was like yeah i think it's glitching there's no way i'm ninth in line at the airport but the airport queue clearly shows there's about 40 cars sitting here it's like she just pulled up and you're ninth it's like not nah, it some don't some don't make sense with that yeah a lot of people use that airplane mode on the lose surge but see this is the thing about airplane mode Austin. i'm gonna tell you about airplane mode 
once you're in airplane mode, data stops transmitting to your phone. So you're not getting any data transmission whatsoever. The app could drop a surge. You're on airplane mode. You're driving and thinking that the surge is still sitting there, but data has stopped transmitting. The moment you come off of airplane mode, you realize the surge is gone because now data starts transmitting to your phone and the app updates. So what I do is I just, I leave the app transmitting. So I'm always online, but I just put it on Uber Pet. Uber Pet is my pause button. That's my offline. So data stays transmitting. And if they pull that surge before I get there, I'll know it because data is still transmitting. But you don't want to get to the surge where you think is that hurry up on airplane mode and the whole screen goes gray. And you're like, oh, shit, the surge was gone. So you just drove like five miles for nothing. <laughs> you're like, shit, shit. So the airplane mode is good. It's good for some things. Like if you don't want to be found, you're airplane mode. But if you want to sit up and go, OK, man, I want to make sure I get that surge and it. And I even had my phone on the other day on, on one of the videos on airplane mode. I mean, on uh, Uber Pet, I was driving towards a $15 surge. I had a $9 surge. It was a $15 surge. I said, I'm going to do a U-turn because I know I'm not going to make it to the 15. Even if I made it to the 15, the $15 was like three miles south, but I had to go north. So I already had $9. Now, if I go three miles south and three miles back north, that's six miles. So I basically went six miles to make $6. That's a dollar a fucking mile. I don't drive for a dollar a mile. So it was pointless for me to go down and get the 15. Just be happy with the nine. So I was happy with the nine. I started going north and they pulled the whole surge. But I had Uber Pet on the whole time. And that's when they pulled the whole thing out. But I already locked in nine already. And then I just went and got me some donuts. I was like, fuck, I'm going to give me some donuts. <laughs> Alicia, you silly. Oh, that's my homegirl, Alicia. She's stupid. She says, what up? She says, you're rent about booty shorts, donut on back legs. Hey, that shit's stupid. I know it. My, my homegirl, Alicia, she, girl, you've been knowing me since what, like 2002? Since Jersey was born. Jersey, my 21-year-old was born. <laughs> I think my 21-year-old, he was probably like six months old when I met you. Alicia's cool. That's my girl right there. 2006. Okay, so he was four then. So Deb was probably just born. Deb was in 2008. Yep. So that was a long time ago. Man, that was a while back. No, it had to be before that because I moved in with Trotter, Trotter and John. I was living with them back in 2003. I was living with Trotter and John in 2003 in Vegas because we lived in Trotter's house for a minute when we was all pitching in and shit, eating motherfucking. We was all broke as a joke. We was all broke. I had just graduated college in 2002. I was out, out of a job, so we was all sharing motherfucking hot dogs and shit. We was getting food from Cisco Foods because John's ex-wife worked at Cisco Foods. She was give us these big-ass packs of motherfucking hot dogs and beans and shit. So we used to fucking be sleeping on the couches eating them hot dogs and beans. <laughs> we used to kick it back in the day. Vegas was the shit. Vegas was the shit. <laughs> it was like, man. Yeah. Somebody said, I use Uber Jeff mode is working. Yeah. Man, them hot dogs fire from Cisco Foods, man. Those some big ass foot long hot dogs. We used to fry those motherfuckers in the skillet, boil them sometimes, barbecue them. Man, I've had hot dogs every way, sideways, man. It's like, dude, we had his wife used to hook us up with big ass just boxes of food from Cisco Foods. We be eating corn, motherfucking big ass corn on the cobs and shit. We be eating fucking pieces, cheese pieces all fucking day. Man, Vegas was the shit. <laughs> uh, this is. Them guys get $500 quests from left to right. Yeah, yeah, they get all that, man, all that. Since pet is my coffee. Oh, Frank Williams, Frank's in the beast. Since pet is my coffee cup. Yeah, and that's what it is, man. A lot of us, you know, we got different ways to, to save the surge and to keep them from sending us all these crazy-ass trips. Because if we don't stop them from sending us these trips, we're going to end up being locked in to a bunch of shit rides and not able to go get that surge. We've got to, like, stop them from sending rides. Got to. And like I said, I wish we had a, a button that just says break. That's it. Just break. So you just might need a break to go take a piss. You're like, hey, man, I need a break. Hit break. And so it, it times you out like it'll say, OK, in 10 minutes, we're going to take you either off break or offline. One of the two. So you got time to go to the bathroom and everything still stays active. So you can pick up a surge if you send it to the gas station and a surge pops up. You get the surge at the gas station because you're on break the whole time. Yeah, on the iPhone, there's a break button. I just use Uber Pet. Uber Pet. All Star says, I like Sergio, but something is off. He's getting $500 quest left and right. And that's funny, huh? He's getting $500 quest from, from Lyft. $500 quest from Lyft. All day, every day. $500 quest. And today, he's interviewing the CEO of Lyft. Is that shit not rigged or what? 
I don't get $500 quest. I get $75 quest. And I ain't interviewing that motherfucker. How in the hell are you getting the interview and you getting the money at the same time? It's, it, they bought his ass. They said, hey, we're going to make sure we fucking, we're going to treat you right before we come on your fucking show. We're going to do you right. So you, because I swear the motherfuckers interview me, I'm going to get it 100. I'm like, hey, man, y'all shit's fucked up. I'll never drive Lyft. I'm stuck on Lux and y'all take me off Lux. Y'all might not ever see my ass again. Real shit. I mean, I'll keep it 100 with his ass. And then, you know, well, but we give you a lot of challenges, right? You're still making, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars a week, right, Jeff? No, because y'all y'all got some shitty rides out there. I'd have to keep that shit 100. Oh, do hey, driving with Chris is doing my first rental from hers tomorrow for a month or so. I can buy the CX-5. Yep. And I like, you know what, Chris? I like how you have a, a, a deadline in mind. You said one month. I tell people rentals are not bad. If you can do a short-term rental, do your short-term rental. Do it. Long-term rentals are going to eat you up alive. $2,000 a month going to eat you up alive. Because in 12 months, you didn't pay like $24,000 for some shit that ain't yours. And people are like, oh, yeah, well, if the engine wants to blow, if the engine won't blow. Motherfucker, that's the way I look at it. I look at the shit positive. I've been driving for five motherfucking years. I ain't blown an engine in shit yet. So to tell me, well, if the engine blows... Wrong motherfucker to talk to because I've been doing this shit for five years. And you can't sell me some shit that's going to happen one day. No. And upcharge me because some shit might happen one day. No. Because if it don't happen, can I have my motherfucking money back? If I bring this motherfucking engine, if I bring this shit back, it's like, hey, you know what? The engine didn't blow. I rented from y'all for a whole year at $2,000 a month and the engine never blew. Can I have half my fucking money back? <laughs> They'll be like, no. You was paying for if it blew. Yeah, exactly, motherfucker. Like, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, exactly, man. And that's the thing, like, and my tires, like, everything's easy. It's easy, man. A lot of people think cars are very expensive to work on. They're just time consuming. That's all. But if you're doing ride sharing, you ain't got to go to the office at eight o'clock in the morning. Use tomorrow to maintain your car. You ain't in the office. The reason why people with W2s got to take their car to a shop because they can't take Wednesday off to fix their shit. They got to go to work Wednesday. So they ain't going to go to work for eight, nine hours on Wednesday, then come home and work on their car. So what do they do? They just take it to a shop. Shops are for W-2 fucking people. For me, I work for myself. So I'm home any fucking ways. My car is sitting outside. I might just order a motherfucking alternator. When the alternator gets in, I'll install a motherfucker. I ain't going nowhere. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of W-2 people, that's what they do. They go, oh, shit, man. You know, my car's broke down. I needed it back on the road. They can't just take the time off to say, well, I got to fix my brakes tomorrow morning when I wake up. No, they got to be at work tomorrow morning. Your job says you need to be here at 8 o'clock. With ride share, I ain't got nowhere to fucking be. I can sit in the parking lot all fucking day if I feel like it. So I might just order me some brakes and fix that shit in my driveway. Cost me a hundred bucks through that entire BMW. It cost me a hundred dollars in brakes. 67 for the front, 33 for the rear. So I bought two set of rears. The set of rears sitting on the shelf right now. I got to order another set of fronts for when I need to change those later. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not one of those people that's going, you know, think I got to rush to the fucking shop every time my car makes a click sound. No, I'm home anyways. I ain't going nowhere. I'm, when I was at a W2, yeah, maybe. But I'm home now. So I can go outside and look at it. This is what's good, Jeff. Damn, dude, getting five hundred dollar quest and haven't gotten a quest in New Orleans since July. Dude, you should see my quest. I be getting like dollar a mile. I be getting one dollar ride quest set like thirty five dollars for seventy rides. I get shit like that all the time. But hey, like I tell my fuckers, you just gotta look at look at the source of where all this shit's coming from. Lyft doesn't give a fuck about every driver in every market. They really don't. They probably have the money. But they're going to put the money where they think it's it's really good. And and it's funny because, like I said, I don't I don't knock Sergio. Sergio, he ain't drove for lifting all the motherfuckers in a long time. He really ain't. But he's very favorable for him right now because why? They give his ass quests all the motherfucking time. If they giving you quests all the fucking time, of course, you're going to be favorable for him. Why wouldn't you be? Oh, lift is bullshit. I can't stand these five hundred dollar fucking quests. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate that, brother. Ryan's always first or second. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. So I know the game when I see it. Sergio, we've been knowing Sergio for a long time, long time. Motherfucker, cool as shit. He'll chase down the motherfucking apps in a heartbeat, be like, hey, you owe, you owe all these motherfucking drivers. But we know when these apps are trying to get a favorable judgment from a guy like Sergio, because Sergio, will t he'll keep it 100 with a motherfucker. Sergio will be like, listen, y'all owe all these drivers all this money because y'all didn't go back to these contracts. But Sergio will call their ass the fuck out. So how do they get favorable with him? Just give his ass a bunch of $500 quests. <laughs> He's not going to say shit bad now. He can't. He can't say, you know what? I've been driving Lyft. And, man, there's some really shitty rides out. 
He can't say that. Motherfucker making a lot of money every week with Lyft. So he's been interviewed by somebody who he's getting paid by pretty much, getting paid pretty well by, which is cool. You can't knock nobody making fucking money. You can't knock that. I don't give a fuck who you are. You can't knock nobody making money. But if somebody's going to be like, Jeff, you need to interview David Richard. These motherfuckers going to be like, we need all the questions from Jeff up front. We would like to know what is he going to ask us and how is he going to ask us? And if it's OK, if we can block his ass from answering, <laughs> they're going to fucking they're going to want to mute me on my own podcast. Can we mute Jeff on his own podcast? Is that a possibility? Because we might not want to hear what Jeff got to fucking say. <laughs> it's like, man, exactly. Get off the speed. God damn it. Get off the speed. Yeah. But see, that's the thing, man. I, and I'm one of those people that'll be like, listen, we're picking up four people for three dollars for two dollars and six two fucking cent. We're picking up four people. Can we get paid more for the people that are ruining our motherfucking back seats, putting these greasy ass motherfucking donut leg motherfuckers driving around in our back seat, mayonnaise and shit all over my motherfucking seat? I gotta stop my car, clean out fucking mayonnaise and shit. Then I turn around, fucking pick up four more people for two dollars and sixty two cents. So I done picked up eight motherfucking people for five dollars and twenty cents. I picked up eight people in two trips for five dollars and twenty fucking cent in the past probably fucking thirty minutes of driving. I'm making eleven dollars a fucking hour, cleaning mayonnaise and shit, and driving groups of people to fuck around. It, that's not ride share to me. That's not ride share to me. That's ride you know fuckery. That's ride fuckery. That's not ride share. It's ride shit. It's what it is. And I'm sitting there like. No, when I see 262 or I see three, because I know we've done this long enough to where we know when we see these busy ass areas and these low ass fares, it's probably four motherfuckers. So I'm like, nope, I'm out. Not doing it. Yeah, Lisa said, I don't think I've ever heard Sergio say a kind word about Uber Lyft in a while, except for the $500 Lyft is giving him. But I still don't hear him say anything nice about it. Yeah, because and that's the thing, you know, Sergio, like, and I said, I know how the rideshare guy is set up. I know how that channel is set up. And I've said it before on, on other shit that I've said. I know how that channel is set up. Sergio, he's a motherfucker that will say some shit that will have motherfuckers looking at that channel sideways like, wait a minute, did they not censor Sergio today or something? Sergio will say some shit. He'll say some shit. But he's on a platform right now where he has to abide by certain rules of the game. That's all it is. Sergio ain't no different than me. <laughs> That motherfucker ain't no different. He'll cuss a motherfucker out. He'll tell the truth, keep it 100. But he's on a platform right now, like when I was on Facebook. There's a lot of shit I couldn't say on Facebook. That's why motherfuckers don't see me on Facebook no more. When you're on somebody else's platform, you got to play by their rules. I drop off of Facebook. I said, fuck Facebook, I'm out. So I just canceled my account and dropped the fuck off. I ain't been, been on it since. Because I don't like when the motherfucker censors the truth and censors what I'm saying when I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And when Facebook was on that period of censoring every fucking body for basically telling the truth, never apologizing for us, for blocking our shit, seizing our shit up, holding our account for fucking seven days and 90 days. And all, they never apologized for that shit. But eventually when the truth came out, we should have all been paid fucking $200 a day for blocking our, because some of us had businesses on there. When I used to do t-shirts, a lot of my t-shirt business went through Facebook and stuff like that. They should have been paying me $200 a day for every day that I was censored for saying some shit that was true. And I couldn't post on Facebook. Pay me $200 a day. I bet they motherfucker would have stopped censoring people. I'm like, wait a minute. So we, we're liable to pay people that we censor for no reason? Yeah, you're liable for it now. Okay, uncensored Jeff. Because those motherfuckers were censoring me for a lot of shit that was true. Telling me, oh, this is misinformation. This, I'm like, no, it's true. What the fuck are you talking about? It was a bunch of motherfuckers that was being paid. And I'm like, man, this is Mike Drop Flag Earther. For real, man. The Flat Earther. What the fuck? I don't even worry about the Flat Earth shit. I tell motherfuckers, as long as I got oxygen, I don't give a fuck if the Earth is round or flat. It doesn't make a difference to me. I just need oxygen. I don't give a fuck if it's flat or not. What, what difference does it make if the Earth is flat or if the Earth is round? Can you breathe, motherfucker? Then we good. Don't worry about that shit. Motherfuckers be arguing about the dumbest shit on the planet. Oh, is the earth really flat or is it really round? I'm like, motherfucker, are you breathing right now? Then that's all you need to worry about. It don't make a difference. Y'all motherfuckers worry about some trivial shit that don't even make a difference right now. <laughs> it's like, I don't give a fuck if it's flat or if it's fucking round. I would give a fuck if the oxygen was disappearing. Now I got a problem now. Well, the earth is losing oxygen. We're going to run out of oxygen in about 80 days. Now we got a fucking problem to talk about. <laughs> I'm like, I give a fuck less if that shit's flat, round, square, motherfucking triangle-ass earth. Is it oxygen on this bitch? That's all I worry about. Cool. Now I'm here. Let's do it. 
<laughs> Eli said, motherfuckers will spend all motherfucking day arguing. It's flat. It's round. It's flat. I'm like, motherfucker, both of you motherfuckers is breathing the same air. What the fuck? Y'all both breathing the same air, arguing over a flat or Y'all arguing about some trivial shit that don't even fucking matter. <laughs> he said, bro, just look at the mountains and the earth ain't flat. Shit, I can give a fuck less. As long as my car can go, I can make some motherfucking money. I can get some parts when I need some parts. My fucking phone works. Been on a podcast, laugh with motherfuckers. Don't make a difference to me if it's flat or not. I can give a fuck less. That's something I ain't even got to worry about. It's like, I'm not doing shit to even go to the end of the earth. I'm not taking nobody that far. I do short trips. So it's like, if I'm doing short trips, it don't matter if the earth is round. I'm not doing no fucking 7,895,000 mile motherfucking trip. I'm doing a trip that's four miles from here to there. I can make it. Don't make it. Is the earth flat? Don't make a difference. I'm only going over there. That's it. It's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> man. Exactly. Man, man. See, I'll see your flat earth and raise you and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Exactly, Vinny. Real shit. <laughs> so I'll see your flat earth and raise you, and I don't give a fuck. I tell the motherfucker, when you go to goddamn McDonald's and order that dusty ass motherfucking burger, do they say, well, if I hand it to you, it might fucking fall because the earth is tilting that way? No, this is handed to you. All this shit is trivial. Don't nobody, motherfuckers will distract you with the most mundane, stupidest shit I've ever. Oh, man. I don't really think they landed on the moon. Bitch, do you plan on going? Then what the fuck are you worried about it for? Well, I just want to know if they really landed on the moon or not. Why? Did you leave something up? Is your motherfucking wallet on the moon? You waiting on the motherfuckers to bring it back? To me, that shit don't make a difference. I give a fuck less if they landed on it or not. Well, if they didn't land on it, they should at least tell us they didn't. What the fuck does the moon have to do with you going to Walmart today? Let me know. <laughs> it's like shit. <laughs> they got him talking about flatter. Yeah, man, for real. This shit's fucking stupid. No, nah, the Super Bowl is in Vegas, man. I'm in Phoenix. The Super Bowl is in Vegas. But I'm going to try to go, though. I'm going to try to go. Yeah, the Final Four is in Phoenix. That's what's up. Uh-oh, y'all. It's 40 minutes till countdown. 40 minutes till David Richards in the building. Fucking ride chair guy. We're going to get this motherfucker today. We're going to fucking walk. We're going to walk up in that bitch like we, like we had the motherfucking pep rally. <laughs> Back in the game, baby. Shit, we're going to, man, ride chair guy going to have like 8,000 motherfucking viewers today. They're going to say, where did all these people come from? Oh, bitch, we had the pep rally. We walking up in this motherfucker. <laughs> We're going to sit in the bleachers today, goddammit. We want to see this shit. <laughs> they're going to say, motherfucking goddamn, they're going to have to fucking get a whole nother, a whole nother goddamn YouTube server. It's going to be so much shit, man. Yeah, look, just, <laughs> just they should just let uh, Richard look at the comments as they come in. Hell yeah. What up, Thomas Lyle? My brother, my brother. Bighorn Kev, thank you, brother. Thank you, my man. He says, thanks, Jeff, for the channel and for the pet trick. Another tool in the toolbox. That's right, baby. You got to use all the tools you can and get this money, man. Use all the fucking tools, brother. I appreciate that, Bighorn Kev, man. I appreciate that, brother. Real shit. Thank you for the super chat, my man. And uh, Tony says, bro, that reminds me that I picked up some NBC broadcasters and took them to the airport. Those guys were not woke in my car. They were putting media blast, $20 tip and all. <laughs> they were putting the media on blast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ryan said, I heard a circle K is on the moon. I, man, I knew it was a circle. Them old dusty ass motherfucking donuts. That ain't snow. That's goddamn Krispy Kreme flakes falling from the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, what is a Boronese? And I'm still clueless about what vehicle I need before March Madness. I'm going to tell you right now, I might, there's a guy that was on my channel. I hope he shows up again. I know I got him in my email. They're going to fucking, I want to rent one of his Uber Black vehicles. I want to drive for him because he has all Uber Black XL fucking, you know, SUVs and everything. I'm going to take his deal for a week. The one week of March Madness because everybody's going everywhere five, six people deep. A lot of basketball players, a lot of families, a lot of people. People will be taking regular Ubers and Lux and shit like that. But if you have a black SUV during March Madness, whew, man, this shit's about to get crazy. So I got to go through my email and find him so I can see what kind of deal he's talking about. So I can go get his motherfucking, I want to go get his black truck. Because I just got to give him a cut of the money. That's it. But I can give him a cut of the money and make way more than just driving my car. That's how crazy it is out here. The Uber share guy, I don't know. Man, I don't know. I can't remember his name, but I know he's in my, my uh, Gmail. So I got to go in Gmail and find him so me and him can sit down and I can go over, you know, what I got, what how I can get one of his black SUVs.
because it's just a share of the money. It's like, hey, you just got to give me this much money. I'm like, cool, no problem. And I'll drive that motherfucker the whole March Madness, make as much as I can make. I don't even got to touch my car. Man, I want to do that shit. I want to do that shit. Yeah, exactly, Don, man. And that's what it is, man. If you can get these black SUVs during events, dude, I follow all of them. In my little orange-ass car, it's all, like the other night, I was at uh, motherfucking uh, the goddamn little Devil's Advocate Bar. So I'm at the Devil's Advocate Bar and was doing Parents Week here at ASU. So I picked up a guy. He sat in the front and his parents sat in the back. As I'm waiting on him, a black SUV pulled in front of me. Man, I swear like six or seven motherfuckers jumped out that. Me and him going to the same spot. I'm probably getting like 20 bucks. This motherfucker's probably getting 100 when we going to the same spot. And it's like, dude, that's the kind of shit I'm on right there. $80 a trip, more than what I'm getting. $80 more a trip. And we doing, we're picking up people from the same area, going to the same bar. And I guarantee he was making 100 bucks when I was making 20 And I'm like, I need a black SUV for these events, man. I need it. Yep. Even if you pay 700 for the car, you make 3000 And you're only doing that shit in like three, four days. You're making $3,000 in three or four days. You just gave somebody 700 bucks. That's nothing. Nothing. Yeah, it's a whole different level, man. A whole because you can pick up groups of people and groups of people would like we picking up four motherfuckers in a car at a time getting and one person's paying. When you pick up a group like that, it's almost like everybody's pitching in because they getting. Yeah, it pays about three to one black cars every time I'm following them. And every once in a while, you'll see like two or three people get out. But even if you only see two or three people get out, they're dressed really nice. They got money. They ain't no motherfuckers like we pick up from Walmart, jump out with motherfucking jogging pants on, shirt hanging on sideways and shit. Those motherfuckers ain't jumping out of no black SUV. Somebody with money's jumping out every single time. And I'm like, it's, I think it's worth it to get a black SUV just for the event alone because it's going to pay for itself. And you ain't got to worry about your fucking car. And the guy who's renting it, I think he takes care of everything. All the maintenance is done. I don't know if the fuel is paid for and shit like that. Insurance, everything's paid. You're just giving them a cut of the profits. That's it. That's it. So I'm like, shit. I'm a man. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is up. <laughs> I plan on pulling on an Alfred. I'm putting on a suit. <laughs> oh, okay. Alfred fucking Belvedere. Motherfucking oh, ass shit. I think he has like Cadillacs and navigators and stuff like that, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. And just like serious black thought, he says it pays about three to one. And, and it's almost what my estimate was because I said, I meant like for Super Bowl. I made thirty, what thirty six hundred dollars in five days. I said all these guys were making about at least ten thousand. So what you saying is exactly what I think. It pays about three to one. They had to be making ten Gs. Had to, because I'm. I was surprised at what I was making. These dudes was killing me. They were everywhere, and it was always loads of people coming out. Each ride I was getting like seventy dollars on. Each ride I would get like seventy bucks on, and I'm like, holy shit, I'm getting seventy bucks. These motherfuckers probably getting three hundred that exact same ride. They picked somebody up at Waste Management, took them right to the hotels I was taking. I'm getting 70. They're probably getting like 250, 300 for that same ride. And I'm like, but they got more people. But they still making more money with the same miles, same distance. But they're getting about three times the amount that I'm getting. And it was just, that's why I kept telling people for Super Bowl, all I did was just follow all the black SUVs. Because I instead of me fucking with the app and trying to get let the app send me to where they wanted to send me, I just go to where I would turn my app off, go to where the SUVs were get a ride real quick. And it was always like, you know, somebody from, you know, Maxim or somebody from Sports Illustrated. And all of a sudden, bam, I'll be right. $80 ride that quick. Drop them off right where we dropping somebody off from. Pick up another group because the black SUVs will be getting loaded up. And I'm sitting the only orange car in front of the fucking Biltmore Hotel. I was the only little orange car, all SUVs around me. And I picked up two NFL guys. And that's when, um, to, uh, what was it, Tyreek or whatever, he walked up to the car and they was like, hey, what's good? What's good, man? But other than that, dude, black SUVs, those are the money makers, man. Those are just because people just, I don't know, man. I don't know what it is about them black SUVs. Everybody don't come jumping out. He says, I'll sell you my expedition. What year is it, William? What years? <laughs> 2020 Suburban 39K. It's not bad. It's not bad. And it's a Suburban too. Shit, I got an Escalade engine sitting right out front. I'll blow that Suburban engine. I'll throw my Escalade 6.0 in that motherfucker with the foil 60E transmission. So I already got another engine for it sitting right in my front yard. That's my shit. And it runs perfect. Like, man. 2020. This is, I'm picked up some, um, I picked you some Saints players when they played CLE. Yeah, exactly. 
26,000 bucks, 26,000 bucks. Invisible Rand says, how many Russia drivers you know with more than a million dollars? None. Real shit. I don't know a lot of people with a million dollars. <laughs> Period. So that's me. But I'm going to tell you right now, I know people with way more than a million, way more than a million. They're bankrupt. They're fucking, they, their expenses and liabilities exceed their assets. They, you know, they go out of business. They got to shut their fucking companies down. The corporations go out of business. They fucking got to move to a whole nother country because they running from shit in America. I know a bunch of people with way more than a million dollars who got a whole lot of fucking problems that I don't got. Like, I don't have to leave America ever. I could be here forever. These motherfuckers living all over the world because if they come to America, they're done. They're done. You look at motherfuckers like Sam Bankman Freed. <laughs> look at Sam Bankman Freed. This dude was damn near billionaire. Damn near billionaire. Look at Kanye. Look at all these motherfuckers out with all this money. All these people got all this money. Look at Bernie Madoff. He was damn near a billionaire. Look at all these people with all this money. Don't let money tell your story. Don't let money tell your story. Because when money tells your story, it's a fake fucking story. Don't ever let make enough profits to live the life you want to live. That's all you got to do. When you start trying to be rich and you start trying to go way too far with shit, that's when your life is going to go down a fucking hill. Do not let money tell your life story. Because I'll tell you right now, I will never be rich. Never. But I'll be comfortable every fucking day. I wake up with no liabilities hanging over my head. I wake up. I can make fucking pancakes. I'm not in a rush. I can go down to fucking Cold Stone, grab some ice cream, sit in front of Circle K, talk to some homeless motherfucking people, eat some crusty ass fucking donuts, enjoy my day. And I don't have nothing close to a million dollars, not even close. So when you start letting money tell the story of your life and you start banking, oh, I want to get a millionaire. You don't want to be no millionaire. Look at the motherfucker that even hit mega bucks for two billion. That motherfucker hit the Powerball for two billion. He been having problems since the day he hit that motherfucker. People, oh, that's my ticket. That's your ticket. I'm there, motherfucker. Look at it. Like I said, when money tells your life story, that means you really didn't have a life. You didn't have something going. I since I've been broke, I've had a really fun fucking life. Even being broke, I've had a fun fucking time. I've had a really good time. Some of my best times was in college when I had no money. We used to steal fucking hot dogs and shit. But I had the best time in college and I have no fucking money. I'm selling hot dogs out of this little store down the street. And I'm and I had a Cocker Spaniel at the time. So I couldn't buy dog food. So I would steal hot dogs and chop them up and give him hot dogs. And I would eat hot dogs, too. So my Cocker Spaniel grew up on people food because I was broke. But it was the best time I ever fucking had. I'd make cookies because I'm like, I can make fucking chocolate chip cookies. We can survive off of those for a minute. Got a lot of flour. I got eggs. Man, we had a fucking blast. That's right. You, you don't need a penny, man. And I tell my fuckers, if, if you make money, if you let money and how much money you got be the whole story of your life, your life is going to be shitty because your, your liabilities at some point is going to exceed your assets. Cash is your assets. So if your liabilities are exceeding your assets, that means your life is upside down. So I don't say, you know, don't let that that ratio be your life. You got to live this shit every day. I walk up all the time. I wake up all the time and I say, all I got to do is drive three, four hours a day. There's 24 hours in a day. If I could drive four of those, that's 20 hours left. I can sleep like six to eight of those. That's 16 hours. That's, you know, if I do that four down to 20 minus the eight, 12. So I have 12 hours of free time, like awake free time, 12 hours of awake free time because I worked four, slept about eight. So that's 12 hours of the day right there. The other 12, I'm awake. So I'm going to enjoy that 12 hours doing whatever. The, if I feel like taking the wheels off my motherfucking car, I'm going to take the wheels off my car. I'm going to walk my dogs, give them treats, try to teach them fucking tricks, clean poop up in the backyard, plant a fucking tree. I got 12 whole motherfucking hours. How many people do you know in this world, in this world, who can wake up after sleeping eight hours and you got 12 hours of free fucking day? Not a lot of people do that. I wake up after sleeping. I have 12 free hours because I only got to drive like four of them later. That's it. Most people wake up. They got to go straight to fucking work for eight to 10 hours. They wake up straight to work eight to 10 hours. That's it. So it's like their free time is spent at their fucking W2. That's where their free time is. My free time is spent just walking around planet motherfucking earth. Whether this motherfucker's flat or whether this motherfucker's circle. I don't know, but I'm just walking around. It's 222 ready for the interview. Uh-oh, we got 30 minutes, Red. 30 minutes. Yeah, Invisible Rents, I ain't going to drive no more. And that's the thing, is like, man, 
to, to be a rideshare driver, like people want to, why don't you go get a real job? I said, motherfucker, go get a real life. How about that shit? Because I have a real life. I got the fakest fucking job in everybody's eyes, but I have the realest fucking life. When I wake up, I do what the fuck I feel like doing. That is a real life. So W2 motherfuckers, you can fuck with me all you want. I don't care. You can go get a real job. You don't have a real job. Doesn't make a difference. The money pays the same. My life is just what is doing what it do. So you can say all motherfucking day, you don't have a real job. I got 12 hours of free fucking time. Do you have 12 hours of free time? If you've got a real job and I don't have a real job, but I live a life like this and I have 12 hours of free fucking time every single day, at least 12 hours of free time. Some days I don't even work at all. I don't think a real job is my answer to happiness. It's not my, no, it might be the answer for some people. A real job may be the answer to some people's life. And that's cool because we're all different. We all, some people feel more purpose in going to work and working and saying, hey, I'm going to get this motherfucking promotion. I used to be that way. It's cool. But at some point I had to wake the fuck up. I say, you know what, dude? I'm spending 14 hours a day in this motherfucking office. 14 hours a day in this motherfucking office I'm spending. And I go home, I go to sleep, I wake the fuck up, I do it all over again. And I just do it every day. So I say, you know what? I'm going to do something different. Everybody's like, well, what you going to do? I said, I don't fucking know. I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> That's it, Doc. Hey, if I'm paying all my bills, it feels real to me. Hey, when that motherfucking power bill come on the counter and you say, okay, $136, you just write a check that day. Again. You, instead of $136, you say, well, I'm going to pay $200, so I got a $60 credit on that motherfucker. So now I got a $64 credit on the next one. I'm just going to send you $200. Because I know I'm going to use power anyways. It's not like my power is going to turn off. I'm going to use power. So if you send me a $136 power bill, I'm going to send you $200 because I want a credit on the next one. It's like, shit, I'm using power. And that's what we do, man. We we live a real life. So I tell motherfuckers, at w, you can say we ain't got a real job. All, if it makes you feel real fucking good in your soul to say, well, it ain't a real job. If that makes you feel good in your fucking soul, keep saying it. Keep saying it because it feels good in my soul to wake the fuck up knowing I don't have a real job and I live better than you. <laughs> keep fucking saying it whatever makes you feel good motherfucker i don't care because i feel good waking up with 12 hours and not do shit i feel good so i tell motherfuckers do what makes you happy i feel happy going around saying ride share drivers don't have a real job and they need to get a real job and they, need to, they have no skill and low skill i'm like i have 12 hours to listen to you because i ain't got no job i have 12 fucking hours to listen to you what are you doing you're you're sneaking online at your w2 to tell me that i need to get a real job you sneaking online is my boss around? I'm going to get on the internet real quick. Get a real job. Ha! Harry, I'm close the motherfucker now before my boss get back. <laughs> and me, I'm just I'm just kicking back, motherfucker. I got 12 hours to listen to you, motherfucker. Say that shit. I got 12 hours. Because I'm going to go drive for four or five hours later. Make the money I got to make. Go to sleep. Wake the fuck up for another 12 hours to do nothing. That's my real job. It's just living. Just living. Yeah, exactly, man. Yep, it's how much you pay in taxes to the Fed. That's wealth. Yep, yep. And I tell motherfuckers, if, you, if you're a true corporate person, truly corporate, you want to always end up below the threshold to pay a fucking dime in taxes. Because when I used to work corporate, my boss used to tell me, we need to spend this much money before this deadline. Give it in bonuses, invest in a fucking company, figure something out. But we need to spend this much money before a deadline or else we're going to owe this much in taxes. Like I said, rich people problems, rich people problems. <laughs> it's like, man, if I pay 500000 in taxes, just made a million dollars. If you pay 500000 in taxes, you have a horrible fucking accountant. It's like, shit, if you have, if you paying $500,000 in taxes, somebody's not telling you about write-offs somewhere along the line. Because all you got to do is just keep reinvesting your fucking money. Just keep reinvesting your money. I mean, why do you think rich people don't pay taxes? Because they're investors. They create jobs. So if I had $500,000 in taxes, that means I made way too much fucking money, which means I should be creating a whole new department, a whole new fucking department, hiring new fucking people. So when the government says, well, what's your net income for the year, Jeff? Oh, the corporation made nothing. We started a whole new department over here. We got, you know, a couple of investments over here. I just bought a share in this whole company. That's what you do. If you paying $500,000 in taxes, you need to fire all your motherfucking accountants. Fire them all. It'd be like, you motherfuckers got me paying. And guess what the government going to do to your money? Guess what they going to do to it? They're going to find some motherfucking country that needs it. 
and send it to them. They ain't going to give it to nobody else. They ain't going to give it to no American. That shit's going to end up overseas, some fucker, because the America's going to invest your money into another country, hoping for a return back. So they're going to go out and buy all the bonds and loans and, and construction shit, all in these other countries, hoping to get a kickback. They ain't going to give it to Americans. Americans gave it to them. So they're like, well, shit, well, let's get this shit over to another country somewhere and do construction loans all over. The, they're going to give loans to every fucking body all over the fucking world, hoping to get a return on those fucking loans because T-bills ain't worth shit. That's where our taxes go. It don't, it don't go to our fucking roads and cities and shit. No, it goes to programs and plans and loans and shit like that. So no, I don't want to pay $500,000 in taxes. No, I want to invest that shit, hire some more Americans. I'm going to start a whole new fucking division. And I'm like, Jeff, where'd all your money go? Well, I started a whole, I built a whole new garage. So when I built the garage, it was four bays. So I had to hire four fucking people. So now I got these four people. Now I'm taking care of four families. So that's where all my money's going now. I didn't give it to the government. I just gave it back to America. <laughs> it's like shit. Yep. Save your expenses. Put your office as an expense. Real shit. Real shit. This is my wife works for a rich family. She overheads them saying they need to donate 10 million to charity to avoid the tax. Yeah, real shit. And that's what my bosses used to do. Be like, we've got to spend some money. What do we do? We do charitable donations. We'll find a few places to give charitable donations to. We'll expense some shit. We'll, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, when, what you do is you find any unclaimed property that your company owns, any unclaimed property, like salaries that haven't been collected, all this shit, and you expense that shit. You write all that shit off. And you give all that money to the state. That's why if you ever want to know if somebody owes you some money, go to your state secretary and ask, put in your social security number, all that shit. See if you got some unclaimed property sitting in the state. Because any company you ever worked for, anybody ever did some, ever had, had a write-off and they gave whatever they owed you to the state, you have unclaimed property at that state. And you're, the state don't just call you and say, hey, man, somebody just left $3,282 here for you. State ain't going to call you and say that shit. You have to file to see if there's any unclaimed property in the state for you. And that's what every state, if you ever lived in any state, ever worked in any state, hit all those fucking states up and say, is there any unclaimed property in my name? And so they'll go through their records. Oh, we got a $1,200, $1,219, you know, amounts in it. We'll cut you a check for that. You'd be like, damn, I was just trying out. I, I didn't know. Cause the corporation or somebody fucking gave that money. They wrote it off to the state and said, this is unclaimed property. We like to write this off. I can hit Vegas up, hit up, and there's usually a statute of limitations. I don't know how long it is in some states, but there's a statute of limitation on claiming your unclaimed property. But all it, even if it was a rebate or something you did with a company, you gotta fucking, you gotta go to the state to say, hey, is there any unclaimed property under my social security number? This is my social. Oh, actually, there's four thousand dollars sitting here. <laughs> yes, I got five hundred ninety in color. Exactly. You have unclaimed property sitting with the state, and it's like. You won't even the state won't tell you that shit. You've got to like submit some you got to submit a request to have them search for it. And a lot of people don't even know that shit. They don't even know it, man. Just look up unclaimed property. Just type in any state. Put in total amount of unclaimed property. It'd be a fucking billion dollars sitting there and nobody knows it. Nobody knows this money is sitting there. It's companies done gave that money. All these people don't roll all this shit off. Gave it, and motherfuckers be sitting there like, holy shit. I've got like $10,000 in unclaimed property sitting in this one state from a check that I never knew I fucking got from, you know, a 401k or some weird shit that somebody put in there. Yep, dormant bank accounts, all that shit. They send dormant bank accounts to the state. If somebody, let's say somebody died and left you in a will and the estate and everything was taken by the state, but your name and all your shit was applied to that, that could be an unclaimed property. You don't know it. They ain't going to call you and say, hey, man, somebody just dropped off like $14,000 with your name on it. They ain't going to fucking call you because they don't want to pay that shit out. No, that's not how it works. You've got to say, let me see if motherfuckers got unclaimed property that I'm owed. Oh, it's 2.30, 2.30. Ooh, you know what that means? It's time to go to the pep rally. <laughs> David Richard. Adolphus, that's right. That's right. A lot of people don't know that. Check every state you've ever lived in. State refund taxes, everything. Check every state you've ever lived in just to see. There might be some unclaimed property you sitting there. I mean, there's been like, let's say you worked at a company and you didn't get uh, your final check after adjustments because you get a final check. You always get a final check. 
but there's always a check after your final check. That's the adjustments for everything, including vacation time. They might owe you accrued anything. They might owe you all the accruals that they've accrued for you. They still owe instead of them hitting you up and giving you the check. Excuse me. Sometimes they'll just send it to the state. So, you know what? Last year we redid all the, the uh, HR shit and all of these people that we terminated, we owed approximately twenty eight thousand dollars total to. We'll just send it to the fucking state. So they just send it to the state instead of fucking with each person. They just send it to the state. And you probably got vacation time that's got paid out, you know, accrued, whatever paid out, health shit paid out. Don't even know it. And you guys will be sitting there like, man, I could really use $4,000. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's cooled out in the desert. Oh, that's right, because you're down in Tucson. That's right. That's right. Shit hurts owes me. Crusty, dusty motherfuckers. Tuck, tuck said, hey, what does hurts owe you? Did, did hurts take some money from you? Those motherfuckers got you, didn't they? They got you. <laughs> Joe said, all of us is worth $5 billion in stocks. Mark, put the set, your social security number, your birth certificate. Now you're talking about claiming, uh, self-claiming yourself, certifying yourself and stuff like that. Joe knows something that a lot of people don't know. It's about our social security numbers and who we are, the debt that we all, we all have, debt that is owed to each one of us, basically is what Joe is talking about. It's a deep fucking deal. It's a really deep deal and too much to get into at the tail end of a motherfucking podcast, but Joe knows what he's talking about. Like, each one of us is worth something to the government and the gov. We can cash that shit in. Oh man, it's it, a hey, just, hey, I'm gonna tell you something right now. Walt. It is not a conspiracy trust because I've known people who have cashed in on some shit and these motherfuckers got houses, nice cars, man. And I won't do it to myself because I'm enjoying my fucking life. I don't want to be bothered with that right now, but it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of paperwork but it's certifying who you are. You're certifying yourself and you're collecting on what's certified based on your social security number. Trust me. Like I said, it's, it's a lot of shit. It's a lot of shit. And there's people that, that actually teach you how to go through the steps in the process. Cause there's paperwork you got to fill out. You can't just make a phone call. There's paperwork. And once you get that paperwork done and you, you're all certified and everything else like that. And people actually pay big money to learn how to do this shit. Cause they'll pay somebody to walk them through all the steps and do it. And it takes months sometimes. And people have bought land with the shit they've been certified for land, like actual fucking property. And it's man, it's a lot. Yeah, exactly. That's why there's lawyers. That's why there's lawyers. Because once you get into that realm of, of paperwork and legal and, and statutes and all of that shit, man, you've got, you've got to know your shit. Cause you don't, once you do it, you don't want any recourse to come back on you like you didn't file a right affidavit. So because you didn't file a right affidavit, it kind of nullifies two or three things you did. Stuff like that. Joe said, got house, car, pay every bill every month. As it, as it, given lives from born and our, our names, that's how it's put on the birth certificate. That's why it's called a certificate. That's right. Certificate, certificate for something. It's a certificate of something. Kind of like when you get a stock. What does the stock have after it? Certificate is a stock certificate. It certifies something. Certificate is a certification that certifies something, and it's a value. That certification is a value. So, like I said, it's a lot of shit to get into, man. It's a lot of shit to get into. I don't even say, Joseph, I'll teach you how to get 200,000. Oh, trust me. I got a homeboy. He lives across town. He had an uh, Instagram page. These motherfuckers, man, they, woo, man, they, they were getting like Mercedes, brand new trucks, brand new cars, houses. It was all about certifying. I'm telling you, man, when, when you know how the statutes of this country were set up and that we're not told that we're not we're not given that education. We're indoctrinated, not educated. Like I said, and there are certain things you learn in civics class and there's there's small little things that you will learn. And when you start putting those pieces together, you can't be denied the truth that we weren't told. You can't be denied. Exactly. Every single person in this country is a slave to the system. That's why people wonder why you've got 50 states, but you have a district of Columbia. There's a district. D.C. is a district. There's something about that district that a lot of people don't realize. So, like I said, it, it's, a, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Mark Cleveland, my man, what's up? What's up? Yeah, and if y'all don't sit up there and, and start, you know, just paying attention to it because they're going to tell you some things are conspiracy theories. Oh, that's a conspiracy theory. What a conspiracy is, a conspiracy is when you conspire. A theory is you have a theory based on someone conspiring to get over on you. 
So a conspiracy theory is only a theory based on a lot of research and all of that shit that someone is conspiring to do something. That's a conspiracy theory. They want you to believe that all conspiracy theories are not true. That's what they want you. To, they want you to make it think that because something's a conspiracy theory, it's automatically not true. That's where they fuck people over. Because I got a shirt that says conspiracy theorists on it. I wear it all the time. Because when you do your research, everybody who was doing research, who got banned, who got flagged, who got put off, they all did their research. Isn't it funny how every you can go back on Facebook and all those motherfucking Instagram posts, you can pull up anybody from 2020. Anything anybody was saying, pull it up to this day. The shit that used to be called conspiracy theories, pull it up to this day and the people will be saying that's true. And they will fight for it saying that. But there were people who used to claim it was a conspiracy. Oh, that's a fucking conspiracy. There is a conspiracy theory. You show it to them today. They will be like, well, that's the truth. Of course, it's the truth. It was always the fucking truth. That's always the truth. But they're going to label it as something to make you think it's not the truth. That's the trick to it, man. That's the trick. They're going to label it. And once you put something as a label in most society, you could just hang it up. You could just hang it up. Because they've labeled it. And once you label it, you can't. It's kind of like labeling somebody a racist. Once you label somebody a racist, that's the worst thing you can do to a person because you're not going to listen to anything they say after that. They tried that shit with Donald Trump, didn't they? Like I said, once you label somebody something, it's hard to erase that label because that label is supposed to paint a picture of who they are in its entirety. Nobody looks at the label and the verification of that label, though. When they label some a conspiracy theory, you have to say, why is it a conspiracy theory? Like Graham says, what is conspire? Conspire is when you, you gather and you purposely and intentionally contort information to not get the truth out. That is a conspiracy. I can conspire with somebody to, let's say, get over on somebody on this car repair. I'm going to conspire. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? This car came in, but today... It was totally fine. But what I need to do, we need to tell this person, let's, you know, say that this is wrong. You agree that this is wrong? Yeah, we'll say that this is wrong. Okay, we'll say that this is wrong and we'll say that they need this, this and this to fix it. And if we say that they need all these things to fix it, now this person's going to believe us, right? Right. That's when you conspire to get over with somebody who you know it's all a lie. It's not true, but you're conspiring to do something to this person right here. And I'm one of those people that I just believe, you know what, if if you do your research and you do your homework and you study things up and something sounds fishy to you, look into it. That's it. Nobody can tell you not to look into something. Look into it. And a lot of people just don't want you to look into something to the point where they would rather call you a negative name than to allow you to speak the support and documentation and everything else you have. Exactly, KK. Real shit. Real shit. Because now that all the information is out on the table, but it's information that everybody was saying ahead of time. They were doing their research, doing pulling up facts, pulling up everything, doing it. And they were saying, OK, this is what it is. But because they wanted to mislead you, they wanted to say, hey, you know what? We're going to call it. We're going to label that a conspiracy theory, because once we label it a conspiracy theory, everybody's going to discount it instead of listen to it. But it's funny how everything that was labeled a conspiracy theory, for the most part, all those things that were labeled end up becoming truth. They weren't theories no more. A theory is only a theory. You've got the theory of gravity. you got the theory. you got all these different theories out there. Once you can prove your theory, your theory now becomes a fact. It's no longer an opinion. That's why it's a conspiracy theory. You have to prove what the conspiracy was and that you have the factual support and documentation. So once you prove it, it becomes fact. You can no longer label it a conspiracy theory. You can no longer say, hey, thank you. I'll fight you in the comments. Please give us the courage to fish correctly without wasting too much time. Talking about cherry picking Uber's raggedy ass. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Thank you. I'll fight you in the comments. I appreciate that. Definitely appreciate that. And you know, we're going to always be fish. We're fishing people. This is what we do. We go out there and we fish. We use Uber Pet to fish. We use that Paw Patrol. God damn it. Yeah. And the theory, that was the theory, that was their theory, was that if you get the shot, you're going to be protected. But you're not protected from the people who haven't got it yet. You're only protected from the, the virus itself. You're protected from that. But you're not protected from the people who haven't got it. When that doesn't make common sense, when that doesn't make common sense, you have to really start investigating. Why would somebody tell me that? Because it doesn't make sense. And it started really making sense. Once the, the conspiracy theories started becoming factual, 
that's when everybody started saying, oh, shit, all the conspiracy theories were right. And when they were the, the media was blatantly telling you misinformation is dangerous. Misinformation is dangerous. They were blatantly telling you that misinformation is dangerous. They just weren't telling you that they're the ones giving you the misinformation. <laughs> that was the trick. That was the trick. They never told you we're giving you misinformation, but they told you a half truth. Misinformation is dangerous. That was true. So in the end, a lot of people who had the theories and everything can now sit up and say, this is a theory that I was telling you about. His father says, you're talking to a big conspiracy theorist here, Jeff and Proud. Same shit. Like I said, I wear a conspiracy theorist shirt out in public. I walk around with, it's got a big ass fucking hazmat symbol on it. And I walk around with it and I tell people, you know, what? there's a reason why people are told things of a certain nature to get them to believe things that, that we should be talking about. We should be able to have open discussion as free people. Let me have an open discussion. When they start shutting down the open discussions, that's your first sign that there's a narrative. That was your first sign. Because we should be able to say, hey, you know, what? I think Ford is trying to get over on me because Ford said these alternators are this and that. But two days ago, I just got this. Uh, we should be able to have that open discussion about Ford and the alternators. We should be able to have it. And we are. Because Ford is not trying to sell a narrative. CNN is not trying to sell a narrative. We're just talking about Ford, free open conversation. But the moment we start talking about my medical health, I can't discuss my own medical health. It's like, that's not right. Because there were a lot of people who were trying to discuss exactly what was happening to them on social media platforms. Excuse me. They were like, hey, yesterday I went and got this done. Today, this is how I'm feeling. They should be flagged as misinformation. But how is it misinformation if it's somebody's truth? They're like, well, there's not enough data to say that. No, there's not enough data to say the shit you're telling us is true because this is all new. So if it's all new and you're telling us to do this, but it's all new and you have no proof that none of this shit works, what proof do you have that this shit works? It's all new. So you are giving us information that's not verified because you can't verify some say as long as everybody got this, then everybody's protected. False. I've never heard of a motherfucker getting the chickenpox vaccine saying you're not going to catch chickenpox unless everybody in the fucking classroom got it. No, I've never heard of that shit before. So this is all new. So when you say, hey, it's only going to work if 100% of the people take it, then that's bullshit because then it's not about the fucking actual virus itself. It's not about that. It's about something else at that point that you're not telling us about. It's about something else because there's nothing that ever happened like that on this fucking planet Earth. So I don't know. Like I said, we got 15 minutes before showtime. Showtime. Oh, Victor said, I think that you found a new glitch with the surge rides on airport schedules. Instead of calling, let's chat with the AI. Exactly. And that's what I do. I chat. And you know what, Victor? Two, two of them, two of my surges that I've sent, I said, hey, you know what? You guys didn't give me my $4.50. One time I said, hey, man, you guys didn't give me my $6.50. They gave me like $18 on one, $20 on the last one I just did. They're not even giving me the surge. They're giving me the whole fucking something completely new. Because I'm like, the guy, it said the guy paid $20 on the first screenshot. Second screenshot said he paid like 48 some dollars. I was like, something don't make sense. Because the surge is only $4.50, but they gave me like 20-something fucking dollars. So something's going screwy with that. But I tell people, man, somebody told, like, Victor, it was you that told me about this shit. <laughs> I think it was you, Victor. You the one who told me to do the shit to begin with. You said, dude. You need to start like letting these people know when you're not getting your surges on your reservations. So I said, okay, cool. Cause you saw me not doing that shit. So I said, okay, cool. Ever since then, 100% of the times of the shit you told me and people told me that doesn't work. It's bullshit. You're lying to people that don't work. You're stealing. Every single time I've done exactly what you told me to do. It's happened. I've gotten the money that they owed me. Not once. But now on two of them, I've gotten way more than what I even asked for. Hey, you forgot my $6. You forgot my $4.50. I've gotten $18, 20 something dollars. So I was like, hey, shit, yeah. I'm like, Victor, you figured the shit out for me because you saw it on my fucking, on my video when I got that damn surge that time. And then I went to the airport and it never showed up. And you even said on the video, I didn't see your surge in your airport reservation. I was like, because I had an airport reservation. And you said, no, you've got to contact them about your money you've got to contact them 
And I was like, what are you talking about? When you don't give you your surge, contact them. And I said, cool. So I did it. Shit's 100% of the time. That shit's work. 100% of the time. I appreciate that shit, Victor. Because you fucking hooked me up to some game. And I've been telling everybody that shit. <laughs> KK said, Uber gave me 26 extra on a reservation because I asked for a $6 surge. Thanks to you, Jeff. Hey, we passing information. Shit, Victor told me. And I just shared that shit. That's, what, that's why I love this channel. Victor saw me fucking up. He saw something was fucked up. He says, Jeff, you're not doing something right, man. You getting $18, you know, reservations. You're getting your little $20 reservations. You're getting that shit. But on your video, the clip before that, you had like a $5 surge. Why ain't your surge on there? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Man, once he told me the trick, shit, I shared that shit with everybody. <laughs> Even people was doubting it. Even people was doubting it. No, you can't get no surge, no reservation. Whatever you get is what you get because you reserved it at that price. You don't get nothing more than that. You're lying to people. Hey, well, it's worked 100% of the fucking time for me. Work for you, KK. You got $26 extra on the 20 on the $6 surge. <laughs> and it's like, yep, Silver Fox, hey, it works for you too. When you snag that surge, well, once you get a reservation, they won't allow you to have a surge. No, you have to trap that shit before they engage your map. People wasn't getting what I was saying, man. I was like, dude, once you trap the surge, do it before they put your foot, they engage your map. Now they owe you that money now. Yeah, exactly. I wonder why they were paying more on top of the surge. And I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know why they the, the shit said twenty seven dollars is what he paid at first. But then it jumped to like 40 something because they gave me that twenty dollar surge. And I was like, whatever. But the funny thing is, the reservation fee was like twelve dollars, but their service fee was 13. It was more than the fucking reservation fee. <laughs> Yep, they don't want to get sued, man. And everybody was in those. The, the first time I put it in the comments, everybody was saying, Nope, it doesn't work. You're lying to people. It's false. You know, you can't tell whatever your reservation is, is all you get. You don't get more. Or you can't get a surge while you're on a reservation. You're lying to people. I'm like, Y'all not getting it, man. Y'all not, y'all talking too fucking much. You're not slowing down and understanding what the video was showing. Trust me on this one. Because, like I said, Ever since Victor told me that shit, 100% of the times that I've done it, I've gotten my money. 100%. Never been told, well, you're not supposed to. Like, nope. Nope. 100% of the time. 100% of the time. And what a hey, Juan said, lift up the same thing. If you're in a surge and those ride pops up, that come up when people are waiting. When you accept the surge, it won't show. But after the ride, lift. Yeah, lift will do it. Lift will do it. I've seen that before. I've seen it on lift. And I'm like, oh, shit. Uber X won't do it though. You gotta call those motherfuckers. Jesse just said Jeff's cherry picking strategy works. It works for me. I'm telling you, man, in some markets, the shit's perfect. The shit's perfect. Okay, y'all. It's 10 minutes until showtime. I need to go in there and grab me some motherfucking juice. Shit, give me some motherfucking potato chips. It's gonna be on, y'all. I'm gonna see y'all all on the ride share guy in about 10 minutes. Please show up, everybody. If you can, please show up on the ride share guy because we're gonna walk in this motherfucker like it's the pep rally. We finna go over there and, and he say, go get your popcorn. <laughs> exactly. Let me go make me some popcorn. I might send this motherfucker with a dozen goddamn crusty ass donuts and just sit here and eat them motherfuckers watching the whole thing. We finna go over there and get it. So, hey, y'all, I appreciate you guys getting alive. Thank you guys for all the super chats. I really appreciate it. You know, thank you, Vic, for helping us with that whole surge issue. I don't forget nobody, man. When we doing this shit, we do it because we sharing information, making sure all these drivers are getting paid what we should be getting paid. Now, Let's go over there, and I'm telling you, motherfuckers, walk your ass across this flat-ass motherfucking earth to your kitchen, and then come back on a round earth to your computer. Somehow, it's both. <laughs> All right, y'all. Hey, I'm going to talk a lot of shit. <laughs> we better go over there and have a good time. Let's go have a good time on a ride share, guy, and let's see if we can get some of our questions answered. Because, like I said, we shouldn't be doing no fucking four passengers for fucking $3. We shouldn't be doing that shit. And I hope they got a way to change that, man. <laughs> All right, market. Hey, appreciate that, market vlogs. Hey, appreciate that, man. Hey, love you guys. Let's go over there and have fun. And we had a great time in the chat today. I appreciate it.